on the far side, who is a wide receiver, sometimes playing flanker, sometimes playing split end. Sunny day, as we said, wind little or no factor, absolutely outstanding for the spectators, could get a little warm for the football players. There's Keating in your picture. Carolina is undefeated, sixth rank. Oklahoma's been beaten twice. And that is Mark Smith almost out of the end zone, and he steps out of the end zone. The ball will come out to the 20-yard line, first and 10 from there. Rod Elkins is your sophomore quarterback, number 10. Amos Lawrence, number 20, is your tailback, and he'll alternate with Bryant, 44. Billy Johnson, your fullback, number 36. Victor Harrison, the flanker, number 9. Your split end, John Richardson, 19. And your tight end is Sheldon Robinson, number 80. Marr, Wooten, Donnelly, Spruill, and Drexler, the forward wall. That is famous Amos Lawrence, and he may have had a yard at most. Maybe a yard at most for Lawrence, who gained 1,000 yards plus in 77, 78, and again in 79. There is the Oklahoma defensive line. Whaley will start at left end. Weddington may play today. He has an ankle. Dawson, Lewis, Turner, and Flanagan has taken over to right end, where Whaley usually plays. Riley back in the lineup, as Bud said, and Coast, the other linebacker. The defensive second there in a moment. Second down and nine to go. That is Richardson in motion. Famous Amos Lawrence tries to get outside. He is. Nobody there. Down the sidelines, the 40, the 30, and dragged down from behind with a saving tackle. Catching him was Ken Sitton, the strong safety. First down at the 20-yard line, inside the 20 at the 18. This is the kind of play we talked about, Jim, just a moment ago. I formation. Motion man to make the secondary move a little bit. The handoff, he faked to the fullback coming to the right. Lawrence breaking back to the outside. He got some fine blocks and then turned on the speed. I thought he was going to take it all the way here. Sitting at a slight angle on him and also showed some speed to catch it. He showed more than I thought he had. First down again, Richardson in motion to the right. Alkins rolls out. He's a sprint out. Throws it and it's intercepted. Here comes Oklahoma. That again is Sutton. He made the saving tackle before, and now he makes the interception. Back to the 40-yard line. Calvin Bryant made the stop in the market at the 41 of Oklahoma. This is one of the great breaks that the uh, team needs to get. Uh, Carolina definitely in field goal position. The Carolina team has run this rollout pass very effectively throughout the season. Oklahoma Songji was just waiting for it that time, stepped in front of the receiver, made the interception to set it up for Oklahoma. Here's the play as the ball is thrown. You can see Songji step in front of the receiver here, making the clean interception. And now we're back at a straight ahead play by Stanley Wilson, gets little or nothing. And I will make the correction. I said it was set in 18. It was Daryl Songji, as Bud said, number 16 with the interception. But two big plays, one by North Carolina and then the turnaround by Oklahoma. Watts and Winters and Overstreet and Wilson make up that backfield. Rhodes and Valor, the split end and tight end, they don't throw that much. It is second down and eight to go from the 44. The wishbone formation. That's Watts carrying the football, pitching back, and getting outside is Chet Winters. Winters across the 50-yard line to about the 49, where he has run out of bounds. Well, not two minutes have gone by, bud, but already there's been enough excitement. There's a flag across the field at the 44-yard line of North Carolina. It was kind of a collision as the ball carry went out of bounds. I don't know whether there was an infraction over there or whether it was a offensive penalty. It appears from the Carolina signals that the infraction will be against the Sooners. A clip is called against Oklahoma. And you'd never know you're an Owen Field to Norman, would you, from the sound of the crowd when they see the penalty? You always hate to get a penalty that late on a play. If the play was already formed. Uh, the yardage had been picked up. And, uh, it appears that the clip was after the first down had been made. And that does make it tough when it's first down and 25 rather than first and 10. You can afford to give up the field position, but uh, 
You can't afford to give up 15 yards and then have 25 on first instead of 10. First and 25. Famous Amos Lawrence, who had 50 yards and a 100-yard day taken away by penalties for North Carolina, gathered the ball inside the 25-yard line as he went around left end. Oklahoma, first down and 25. And then right back, as rolling out to pass, was their quarterback, and this is Elkins, a, and it was intercepted by Sanji. And now it's first and 25, and move the wall back to the Oklahoma 38. A broken wishbone. Watts with the football. Watts has an open field. Watts is across the 35 and brought down inside the 30, and we are in for a wild afternoon. Ira Bratton, Greg Poole made the stop. I was about to say, Jim, that that's the type of down and yarded situation a wishbone team really does everything possible to avoid. Oklahoma split the wishbone that time, put a man in motion. Wilson, the fullback, did a great job of blocking. Watts, of course, did a great job of running with the ball. They took the first down in 25, turned it into an easy first down. And remember, in the nation, North Carolina's number three against the rush, only 76 yards per game. Oklahoma has nearly that amount right now. Around the end goes Stanley Wilson. And Wilson picks up four or five yards before Lee Schaffer and Tyrus Bratton made the stop. Schaffer is a junior out of Durham, North Carolina. And way back when, and not too long ago, it seems to me, and it may be a sign of age, uh, Schaffer's father was an All-American at North Carolina. And we got a penalty this time against the Tar Heels. Face mask. Wilson is an unusual man for a wishbone fullback, Jim, in that he's not that big. He's uh, six feet, 195 pounds, but uh, his fake over the ball is how the offense begins and uh, usually has somebody a little more sturdy than that, but you can't be any quicker than he is. But let us not put the cart before the horse, but as we talked about the fact that Carolina is number three in the nation in rushing defense, they lead the nation in scoring defense, giving up less than six points per ball game, and also no one has scored a touchdown against their first team. Getting close maybe to having that one broken right now. First down. So Oklahoma is liable to put a dent into this in a hurry, but Carolina's already shown it can move the football. All right, it is first down from the 11 and a half yard line. Oklahoma scoreless. And that is Watts carrying the football down inside the five, down to the two, and very close to a first down. And again, the quarterback, Bratton, makes the stop. This is why the wishbone is so terribly hard to stop. Uh, they've got the three people coming over the ball, and when you have someone like Watts, who is almost as strong as a tailback, running with, with great leg balance and drive, he picks up the extra yardage after he's hit. Watch the play start here, and there's the fake to Wilson. Watts comes off the ball, following the block of Overstreet. Overstreet knocks his man down. Watts jukes it inside quickly, and then runs like a halfback. Lawrence Taylor has not figured in on a play yet. Second down, short yardage to go, and touchdown or not? They say he fumbled the, the ball. Fumbled the ball. I thought it was going to be a touchdown, and Greg Poole jumped on the fumbled football. And that quiets down the Owens fans for a moment, but I can't believe the changes and fortunes that we have seen. Poole is happy. Let's watch it again. Overstreet with the football. Overstreet has the ball very well from Watts. He ducked to the outside that he was taking it into the end zone but you could see the ball pop loose there just as he hit the ground had he had the ball forward a little bit more it would have been over the goal line it would have been touchdown instead of fumble and so the Carolina defense remains intact in that no one has scored a touchdown but they're about an inch away from having scored one low setback is Billy Johnson he's got the football and maybe a yard and that's all When you have third, second down and one, Jim, for a first down, and you can put it in there, you got five shots from the really a yard and a half line, and then you fumble the football. That's one of the things that just makes you get gray and old as a coach. John Richardson, 19, and Victor Harrison, 9, are shuffling in and out with the plays, and as Harrison has come in as a flanker, there he have a sophomore throw from the end zone. We'll see. Yes, sir. He's throwing it out and overthrows his man. Incomplete. I think he was a little bit over anxious that time, Jim, having had the previous pass intercepted. However, Jimerson was in good position on the play. 
Mike Chatham, who leads the team and catches with 12, was the man out there. And now it is a third down play. Steve Streeter is the putter. Or Carolina, should he be needed to punt from the end zone, has an outstanding average of nearly 43 yards. Carolina hopes they'll pick up a couple of yards in this play. If not, their kicker will only be 11 yards back instead of the customary 15 when he has to punt the ball out of the end zone. Two wide receivers in there now, both on the same side, Richardson and Harrison. That is Richardson in motion to the left. Second man through is famous Amos Lawrence, and there he goes. First down, North Carolina. Adam third down on the yard at the one yard line and Lawrence who earlier pulled off a huge run gets a big first down. This is the same play that he broke the uh, first time Carolina had the ball. A fake to the left of the screen to the fullback. A counter play by Lawrence. Uh, he's not a very big back either 182 but he runs with power. Now Mike Chatham comes in. He is a tight end and Harrison a wide receiver goes out. First down, ball just over the 11, no score, first period, exciting ball game. Quick pitch back, and that is famous Amos Lawrence. And Lawrence gets out near the 15-yard line, a gain of about two and a half. It is second down and long. It's very quick change of offensive formation by Carolina. They have one man left in the backfield here after their motion man is gone. It's the pitch out toss. Riley was going for it. He overran it, was knocked down nicely. Lawrence broke back inside of him to pick up very short yardage. Well, Lawrence now has carried the ball three times for 74 yards, and he is the all-time leading North Carolina runner in history. So passing them all, Bryant has come in to replace him at tailback. And that is Kelvin Bryant. He is a tough inside runner and gets out near the 19-yard line. Dragged down there by number 95, the nose guard, Johnny Lewis, who showed good speed to come from his nose guard position, floating to the left. When Lawrence is in there, it's a different kind of running game than when Bryant is in there. Lawrence likes to get outside. Bryant likes to go up the middle. Bryant, though, has got the same kind of speed that Lawrence does. He ran 100 yards in 9.25 seconds when he was in high school. 9.32 to go. First period, no score. Two big turnovers. Oklahoma was close to scoring a touchdown. That is the quarterback Elkins out. He can run if he wants. He's got to put his head down and run and be very close to the first down. Johnson threw a good block for him as Rod Elkins gets out near the 21 yard line. This is the pressure that uh, Carolina puts on you with Elkins rollout. He's outside of the contained man there. As you can see, he was blocked. Everybody was covered downfield very well. He decided to run with the ball. He's 204 pounds, big and strong, but he came up just short of the first down. Steve Streeter, whose brother Jimmy used to play for Tennessee, is in to do the punting at the six-yard line. Low pass, gets the ball away. He always has good hang time. This is a very short punt, taken on a fair catch at the 44-yard line. Very bad snap from center, but a good job of handling the ball by Streeter. He had to hurry his kick, and it was a 24-yard punt, and that's, of course, way below his average. Let's watch him as he scoops the ball up. Didn't quite have time, and his foot came across the ball. He hooked it. Short punt. Oklahoma is in Carolina territory. Amos Lawrence is the 11th player in history to go over 4,000 yards, and he may become, by the end of the season, the second player in history to gain 1,000 yards in each of his four years. The other man, of course, is Tony Dorsett. All right. There's a handoff. And inside the 40-yard line is Chet Winters. And Daryl Nicholson makes the stop of him. Nicholson, a good hitter, a linebacker out of Winston-Salem. Winters is a sophomore halfback for Oklahoma's. Overstreet on the other side is a senior. Wilson, the fullback, is a sophomore. And Watts, the man who either makes it go or doesn't, seven turnovers against Texas, is a senior. Second down and five to go. The ball on the 39-yard line. And that is Wilson carrying the football, and Wilson's got the first down. And that rushing defensive statistic of North Carolina is going to go a winging here because Oklahoma can move the football. They're also making Carolina change their defense by shuffling their ends from one side to the other. They take change the strong side after Carolina has taken their defensive position, and Carolina likes to swing their safety men and their linebackers to the tight side, the tight end side, by shuffling the ends back and forth. They change the tight side to the weak side. Lawrence Taylor has not been a factor yet, and he is the big man. Whistle blows, and it could be that they were drawn offside. Lawrence Taylor's number is 98. The other outstanding All-America potential is Donnell Thompson, 76, a left tackle. 
We have not made a call on either man yet. That shows you that uh, Oklahoma's game plan is outstanding because they're just not fooling around with those folks. They're going the other way. It's correct for offensive error by Oklahoma. Procedure foul. penalty. Illegal procedure. Movement of the line. Oklahoma. First down. First and five. Seven forty-five left. First period. Make that first and 15, not first and five. First and 15, 7.48 left. First quarter, no score. Winners in motion. The ball is handed off and straight ahead goes Wilson. And Wilson picks up some of that five yards. They lost on the illegal procedure penalty. On their first possession, uh, Oklahoma did not give the ball to Wilson. They faked to him and were able to turn the corner outside as we look at Barry Switzer planning his next offensive call. They've gone to Wilson on this drive the last two times. Second and 11 from the 34. Watts is not thrown yet. He's back to throw now, and he throws way out of bounds. A man may have been bumped, but it makes no difference because the ball was so far out of bounds that no one could have caught that ball, offensively or defensively. Steve Rhodes was the man who was trying to get to the ball. The uh, fake here. Watts tries to throw the rope really before he's on balance. You can see him looking all the way out there. He turns and he wasn't really properly set to throw the ball. He had a lot of arm on the ball and it was way, way out of bounds. On his third down and long. Hey, Sammy Johnson has come in and they've taken the nose guard, Paul Davis, out on an obvious passing situation. Yolanda goes to the nickel defense. Watts carrying the football. Watts pitches out at the last moment to David Overstreet. He does not get the first down. But he's inside the 25-yard line. And let's see whether they go for the field goal or whether they go for, whoops, there's a flag down, so that could change everything. I think it's a flag. Uh, may have been. I guess it's not. Uh, just one of the players lost something. Let's watch Watts as he fakes to Wilson. Wilson makes a fine block. This is a very delayed pitch out. Overstreet had to pause momentarily to get the ball. He tried to turn it upfield to the first down, but missed by about a yard. Well, and I see a man out there, Bud, who has no shoe on, and that means that Michael Keeling has come in and apparently will try a field goal. And time is out on the field with the ball at the 23-yard line. And now maybe we can catch your breath a little bit and talk about what the buildup to this is. As we told you, Barry Switzer has never lost more than two games in any year. Oklahoma and North Carolina faced each other three times, and Oklahoma's won all three. And not only that, the Sooners of Oklahoma have never lost to an Atlantic Coast Conference team. So not only is the national championship possibilities for North Carolina on the line here today, but the pride of the Atlantic Coast Conference is on the line here today. They'd love to win, and they give up only 76 yards per game until now, but Oklahoma already has outdone that. Uh, I would feel that uh, Carolina would begin to adjust better to the uh, wishbone when they played against it last week, uh, but uh, the execution of East Carolina is not like Oklahoma, just from the speed factor. Oklahoma had uh, appeared that they were going to go for a field goal before they took the timeout, but I believe now they're going to go for the first down. It's fourth down in a yard, and Watts is in the ball game, and this will be a key play. You wonder whether it came from upstairs from Barry Switzer or whether the team went over and said, hey, folks, we've only got that far to go. That was a staff call, I can assure you. <laughs> the ball is on the 23. It is fourth down, one yard to go. Oklahoma. The nose guard, Davis, is back in. That is Watts. The ball is pitched back, first down. Down the sideline goes over Street. Touchdown. Fourth and one at the 23. And Overstreet has scored the first time Carolina's defense has had a touchdown scored on it this year. As we talk so often, Jim, uh, when you go into a short yardage defense and everybody closes to the inside, if you do turn the corner to the outside, it's home free. Watts does a beautiful job of handling the ball, pitches it off just as he was hit. Overstreet has the corner turn, and Overstreet's got speed. He tiptoes it down the sidelines into the end zone, having to fight for it, but he gets to the goal line, but his momentum kept him inbounds for the score. Well, now Keeling is in this time to kick the extra point. And the extra point is good. The number one team in the nation in scoring defense is North Carolina. But they've been dented by already better than their average here today. That's the wishbone option play, as you could see, for the score. Watts held the ball to the very last moment. Carolina was squeezing everything to the inside. He got around the corner and had strength enough to get past the safety man into the end zone. 
And remember, as a sooner schooner goes off the field after the touchdown, that Oklahoma was very close to scoring earlier when there was a fumble by Overstreet on the one inch line. And now this time, David goes 23 yards, and the pride of that Carolina defense has been rattled a little bit by the fine rushing offense of Oklahoma, which, by the way, is number two in the nation rushing the football. Carolina will have to get its act together. The entire team did not get here until well into the dinner hour last night. They couldn't get an earlier charter. Some of the wide receivers and the quarterback and the quarterback coach did come up here because to play in Owens Field in Norman, Oklahoma, it is a tough thing to do. Next week, some of our games, Air Force Army, Arkansas, Baylor, that should be a good one. And Bud and I will be LSU at Alabama. And Keeling again puts it out of the end zone. Harrison watches it go by. And Carolina, which had a long run, only to have the ball intercepted as they moved inside the 25, will go on offense again. That was a break for Keeling. Carolina was offside on the extra point try. The penalty is always assessed uh, against a defensive team on the following kickoff. So Keeling that time was kicking from the 40 yard line and he put a lot of foot into the ball. First and 10. Amos Lawrence has had an outstanding day but the Tar Heels have not scored and Oklahoma has and that's the difference with 648 to go. Harrison is wide to the right. Lawrence the tailback Johnson the up man. There's famous Amos Lawrence and he's going to get a yard and that's about all. They love to put a man in motion and use him as yet another blocker. That always seems to change the defense too, Jim. When the motion man comes, uh, you change the strong side to the weak side, and the defensive secondary has to move laterally with the motion man. And when you're moving laterally and it's a running play, you don't get the same momentum forward to support the line and linebackers against the run. Second down and a long eight. Chatham sets up on the other side as a tight end. And Elkins fakes the handoff. Now has a man in the clear, and it's not good. That's Billy Johnson. And he was looking away from the sun, but simply did not catch the football. I think Elkins threw the ball a little bit uh, too far. Johnson is a very strong runner, 253 pounds. If he catches a ball in the open field, he's tough. That's the good fake to Lawrence. Elkins rolls out, but you can see he overthrew Johnson just a little bit. And you can see Ken Sitton sitting there looking for the second Oklahoma. Interception of the day, Son G has one already. Third down and long. Third and about eight. Has to be a passing down now. Elkins back. Goes, has a man in the clear. First down, that is Mike Chatham. His 13th catch of the year. And the ball is out near the 38-yard line. And they'll move the sticks, and Carolina again shows it can move the football on Oklahoma. And you can see how wide, wide open he is as we watch it on the replay. There's again the play action. And whenever Lawrence comes over the football, you respect him. Elkins finds his man, Chatham, crossing the field here. He's wide open. He's hit very solidly by Sanji, but it's first down Carolina. Richardson wide to the left and Harrison to the right. And in motion goes famous Amos Lawrence. And Elkins is running that way. Throws the ball that way behind Lawrence at the 44-yard line. By the way, that John Richardson I keep talking about, I told you that Lee Schaffer, the linebacker's dad, was an All-American at Carolina. Well, John Richardson, the split end, wide receiver, his dad, Jerry, used to play for the Baltimore Colts years ago. And again, I have to say, not that many ago as far as we're concerned. <laughs> That's but, true. But some years ago. Second down and 10, the ball at the 38-yard line of North Carolina, Oklahoma, leading before the 13th consecutive sellout crowd. 39th consecutive sellout crowd. They got three wide receivers in now. On second down, but instead the ball is handed to Lawrence and he just gets a yard or two to the 40 yard line. And that is about all. Carolina thinking uh, Oklahoma would be thinking pass, ran the draw play that time. Uh, Oklahoma was trying to pressure the passer, but they made a very fine recovery. They didn't get in too deep and were able to recover onto the draw. They didn't think that Mike Weddington, the defensive left end, would play much because of his ankle, but Weddington is in and made that tackle. This is a big game. You can't afford to not have your best there all of the time. Chatham has come back in on an obvious passing down. Richardson in motion back toward the line of scrimmage. Elkins back has the time and has a man open. And that is Richardson. And that's another first down. 
So twice on third and long. Elkins goes to the air to different receivers and each time gets a first down. Again, we get the little bit of a play action there. Richardson is coming across the middle. It's against the grain. The secondary goes with the flow of the play. The linebackers go with the flow of the play. You throw back against the grain and you find the open slot. Richardson makes a fine catch after a good throw by Elkins. A lot at stake here at Owens Field, Norman, Oklahoma for Carolina. And for Oklahoma, they still have dreams of a big bowl themselves. First down and ten. Nine bowl representatives are here. Nine different ones. There's famous Amos Lawrence. Uh, gee, I thought he may have lost the football as he got through there. But again, he is hit this time by Richard Turner, number 96, the right tackle. And a flag is down. And they're talking to Carolina. And I think that's John Richardson hanging around there. And they're pointing to Oklahoma. The Oklahoma pass defense was riddled by Stanford, Jim, the last time we saw them. And uh, thus far, Elkins uh, has made the Sooner pass defense. Uh, they haven't hit anything big, but they've hit in front of the safety men and they move the ball with their passing attack. A personal foul signaled by Vance Carlson against both teams offsetting penalties. He's the referee. Clifton Noble is our umpire. The linesman is Charles Weems. The line judge is Raymond Menton. Tom Finkton is the field judge and Robert E. Sandal is the back judge. Foul. Dead ball on both teams. The down counts. It'll be second down. Dead ball foul. Second down. Six to go. Seven nothing Oklahoma. We're in the first quarter. Four minutes. Twenty four seconds. And now Mark Smith is in, the freshman from Fayetteville, wide receiver, wide to the left. Richardson on the right and now in motion. Second man through is Lawrence, flashing runner, and standing him up is Mike Coast. Mike Coast, the weak side linebacker, the senior out of Bartlesville, and it's a passing down again, perhaps, for North Carolina. Elkins, the last two times, has thrown first to Chatham for first down, then to Richardson for first down. It is third. And six. And you can tell that Oklahoma is keying on the tailback uh, very effectively with their line and linebackers. They're changing their line from the odd set, which has a man over the center, Donnelly, to an even set, which puts men over the offensive guards. Now famous Amos Lawrence is wide to the left. Elkins across the middle, Chatham. First down, inside the 30. Gets a block, inside the 20, knocked out of bounds at the 16-15 yard line. Chatham with his 14th catch and a great block from another tight end in there, Sheldon Robertson. Beautiful run and very fine execution on the play. Straight drop back. Elkins finds Chatham just slipping up from his tight end position, and then he runs by some Sooners. I thought that he might take this one all away when he broke that last tackle. Kept fighting, kept his feet. Finally, he's knocked out of bounds by Sanji. Harrison goes wide left. Chatham sets up on the right side. Tucker to the right. Now Tucker in motion. Elkins has time. Almost tripped up. Looks back, throws back, has his man at the two-yard line. First and goal to go. Victor Harrison takes the ball, and what a fine play by Rod Elkins. Stepping out of a tackle, throwing back against the grain while on the run. Very fine play that time by Elkins. He was really pressured as we watched the quarterback roll out behind the fullback and the tailback he gets outside almost was tackled there almost lost his balance recovered it and then while moving had the poise to find his receiver on the two yard line a solid tackle but Carolina is in business they say that because he's a fine shortstop that's why he's got such a great arm second man through Lawrence touchdown an 80 yard drive the answer to Oklahoma's touchdown just about four minutes ago with Lawrence taking it in on three times on third and long, Elkins passing brought it home. Very good offensive line charge this time by Carolina. There's the handoff. You can see that the linemen have blown Oklahoma off the line of scrimmage. The linebackers tried to close the gaps but couldn't get there, and it's touchdown Carolina as we watch it one more time. Jeff Hayes, a junior out of Elkin, North Carolina, 35 out of 35 last year, 22 out of 23 this year. With Richardson holding for him, will try to tie this ball game up. Kick is up and the kick is perfect. And we have a tie ball game and a game that I frankly thought was going to develop into a defensive struggle and it may yet do that. But at the moment, it is seven to seven in the first quarter with both teams able to move the football. 2.56 to go. We're just in the first quarter. 
What a difference a month makes, as we said earlier, and that is when we were here a month ago when Stanford upset Oklahoma. It was a rainy, cold day. That is a beautiful day today. Again, next week, Air Force at Army, Arkansas at Baylor. As I speak to you right now, at least, Baylor's undefeated and leading the Southwestern Conference. LSU at Alabama, as I speak to you now, Alabama's number one in the nation. And Bud and I will be down there. Arizona at Washington. And McNeese at Louisiana. And I would assume that is Louisiana Tech. That will be on next week. We've only got two minutes and 56 seconds uh, remaining in the first quarter, and we have not yet had a punt in the game, which gives you some idea of the effectiveness of these two teams' offenses. And now Hayes will kick it off. Oklahoma sends back Buster Rhymes. And it is Rhymes that's going to catch the ball at the 10-yard line. He's got good long legs, good speed. Look out, Buster Rhymes, all the way back to the 45-yard line. And the team of North Carolina has been able to contain so many teams so well to climb atop the NCAA statistics as a Tiger by the tail today and the Boomer Sooners of Oklahoma. Ryan's returned to kick off 100 yards earlier for a touchdown. I thought he might break that one, but the Carolina safety men played it very well. He Butch. broke through the front line, but the two safety men closed on him quickly. Butch Griffin made the saving tackle first down at the 45. Outstanding field position for Oklahoma who break that wishbone and look out there's Overstreet first down across the 45 to the 44 where Greg Cool comes up to make the stop and that Carolina defensive team that's so good against the rush is being tested by that Oklahoma offensive team that is so good with the rush. Rarely do you give the ball to the first man on the so-called inside belly play you usually give it to the second man but that time they gave it to Wilson Carolina was waiting for the second man. They kind of let Wilson run by him, and he picked up a first down. That was number 32, not 22. Wilson, not Overstreet. First down, 45-yard line. First man through, picks up big yardage again. Inside the 45-yard line, where Daniels and Taylor make the stop. And I tell you, bud, that this time it is Wilson again. I want to emphasize once more, Jim, about what those two tight ends changing their position do to the Carolina defense. Carolina likes to have their strong safety. There are two strong side linebackers to the side of the tight end. They get set, then Oklahoma shuffles the ends, and that puts them on the opposite side of where they would like to be. Quick, quick, Harry, stand back in on the tackle. Second down and very short yardage for Oklahoma. And now look out. Hello there, Chet Winters. Paul Davis, a nose guard. In there very quickly, number 34, the senior out of Appalachia, Virginia. He is a small nose guard in that he weighs 220, but he really rocked back Chet Winters. A loss on the play of perhaps a half a yard. It's third and about three. That's the first counter play that we've seen Oklahoma run. Uh, everything else has been just pure wishbone. Seven to seven, a minute 20 to go. First quarter. Grayson goes wide right. There is Overstreet, and the flag is down, and I believe that Winters may have moved before the snap, which would make it third down and seven to go and negate that first down. Bill Street. Jackson made the stop. I think we can see the movement there. The play is the inside belly play. He gets a lot of fine blocking, and he easily picked up the first down, but the procedure penalty was very, very costly. Winters moved just a little bit before the ball was snapped. You know, Barry Switzer and his team were so proud that a week ago, motion. Oklahoma, third down. Never made a turnover at all last week. And that fumble on the one and yard And then line. they go all the way down to the one-inch line today and turn the ball over. That's not the kind of a fumble they worry about. They worry about the fumbles on the ball handling. Third down. Rhodes wide to the right. Seven to go. Watts. Watts, Watts, first down, Watts, inside the 25. Watts is going to score, touchdown Oklahoma, 41 yards. What a magnificent run, Jim. Well, now already, North Carolina has given up if they get the extra point. More points than they have all year. The reverse pivot that time. Carolina's going quickly with Watts. He set him up by going the wrong way, reversing, coming back. But he's got great balance. He changes direction without losing any speed. 
Got a fine block that time from his end downfield into the end zone for the score. Healy comes on to add the extra point and does so, and it's 14 to 7. Well, in the opening game of the season, Furman got 13 points. Nobody's come close to that since. Oklahoma already has 14 and has been running wild against a team that is an outstanding rushing defensive squad. That'll shake Carolina's defensive uh, confidence, Jim. Uh, when you've played seven games and no one has run the football against you at all, the team has not completed a single forward pass, and they run for two touchdowns against you, you've got to scratch your head a little bit and wonder. Watts has already carried more yardage against North Carolina than Carolina's given up on an average all year per team. There was a reverse pivot by Watts to get Carolina taking one step in the wrong direction. He turned the corner, then cut back behind some very good blocks downfield. He's got the speed to accelerate, moving against the grain. Once he's passed that last man, it's all she wrote as he picks up one more good block downfield from Wilson. 44 seconds, Mark Smith and Victor Harrison are deep. Keeling will kick off. Last time, Carolina marched right back after a touchdown. Let's see what they do this time. This is Mark Smith, the freshman, watching it go through the end zone. And again, Carolina will start from the 20. Carolina has not had good field position after any kick thus far today. The best field position they've had is where they are right now, Jim, on the 20. They've had the fumble on the one-yard line, Oklahoma did, so they started from there. The other three possessions have all been from the 20-yard line. Famous Amos Lawrence comes on. Kelvin Bryant's not getting that much playing time today. Lawrence has been outstanding. He has scored the only touchdown. And on third down situations on the last drive, three times Rod Elkins hit wide receivers, and three times there were different wide receivers. First and ten. We're near the end of the first quarter. Billy Johnson, the fullback, picks up some tough yardage out to the 23-yard line where he has stopped there. And stopped there by, looks like, Mike Coast. I thought so. Uh, Wolfhome has played the run extremely well, but uh, in playing the run so well, their linebackers are up close enough that it's been difficult for them to get back and add much to the pass defense. The passes have been over the linebackers, in front of the safety men, but they've been deadly effective for Carolina thus far. Mark Smith wide left. Richardson wide to the right. Lawrence in motion. Again, the fullback, and again, Billy Johnson gets a couple of yards. It'll be third down and about four to go. Barry Switzer, as time is about to run out, said yesterday his team can tell a good ball club on film. And he says, I'm telling you, Carolina's good. We can see Riley there right in the middle of the screen fighting off the block of the tight end. And then he and Coast close on the line. Ball carrier Johnson as he comes through the line. That's excellent defensive play by both linebackers. What a first quarter we have seen. At the end of the first quarter of play, it is Oklahoma 14 and undefeated North Carolina 7. I'm here to talk to people in business who are serious about it. Where can you get all the business news you need these days? In a daily paper? Even in the best, you get only a section of business news. Too little. In business magazines, if you have to wait a week, maybe the news isn't news anymore. Too late. Too little. Too late. There's one publication, one, that gives you all the business news you need when you need it. The Wall Street Journal. Every business day, the journal reports anything happening anywhere in the world that can affect business. Your business, your company, your career. Anything, anywhere, every business day, in depth, in detail, in time for you to use it. If you're in business and serious about it, don't settle for too little, too late. Get the journal. Here's how. Call toll-free 800-228-3300 to get the Wall Street Journal delivered every business day for 26 weeks for just $33. 26 weeks, 130 issues for $33. Call 800-228-3300 today. The 39th consecutive sellout, and they've got a dilly of a football game, and they know that their coach, Barry Switzer, has never lost more than two. He's in a ball game today. We're about to start the second quarter, and he's on top at the moment. Oklahoma, 14, and North Carolina, 7. coordination and quick response to race cars until MS, multiple sclerosis, attack my central nervous system. My teammate Terry and I race against the clock, just like Ron here. 
We want to beat multiple sclerosis before it beats him. You see, multiple sclerosis doesn't just cripple. Send a check to the MS Society. When you help, we all win. Catch up on all the weekend's action Monday nights with ESPN's NCAA Football Review. See highlights of top games. Take a look at the ESPN Top 10 as your Total Sports Network brings you television's most extensive coverage of college football. Tune in Monday evening at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, when Bob Lee hosts NCAA Football Review. NCAA football on ESPN. Michigan at Indiana, Sunday, 10 a.m. and Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on your Total Sports Network. Out and five as we start the second quarter. On the 25 of North Carolina, and Elkins is back to throw again. Has time again, and look out, almost intercepted again. That time, they were all around John Richardson. The defense of Oklahoma, they'll have to kick it back. Oklahoma's been doing everything possible to try to put some pressure on Elkins, but when you're running with the football as he does here, following your lead blockers, it's very hard to get anybody to him, but that time we almost had an interception by Jimerson. Steve Streeter will kick it away to Jay Jimerson, who is returning punts because Basil Banks, their fine punt return and cornerback, is out, and hey, he drifted this one high. Son in the eyes of Jimerson, takes it back at the 15-yard line, tries to get outside where there's a wall, and he is thrown at the 24-yard line by Willie Harris, a defensive back who plays on the special teams. A nine-yard return, and it is first and 10 Oklahoma on their own 24-yard line. I'm Jim Simpson, Bud Wilkinson. We're in Owens Field, Norman, Oklahoma. As Bud and I came off the field today, rightfully so, he got an ovation from the crowd who still remember those many great years of Bud Wilkinson. Uh, great punt that time, Jim, by Streeter. 51 net yards on the punt. Great kick, great coverage. Valora, wide left, wishbone, very little substituting going on by either club, except Buster Rhymes is now in there as a halfback at his flank left. Wilson with the football, and they take it away from Wilson, give it back to Winters, and Winters gets, or I should say, Overstreet, and he is tackled by Paul Davis. That's the power part of the wishbone. You have the lead by the fullback and lead by the on halfback, or you're running the pure option where you're finessing the ball along the line of scrimmage. Second down, seven to go. And now Bobby Grayson is in. He's the leading pass receiver out wide to the right. Watts has been the star today with his running. Overstreet is up. Watts hands the ball, and Wilson gets near a first down at the 34-yard line. And Carolina's rushing defense is sorely tested. There you can see Daryl Nicholson, the linebacker, and Donnell Thompson, the left tackle, 76, make the stop. Thompson coming across hard, then having to pursue because he didn't realize that Wilson had the ball. He's in to make the tackle, and it was a fine execution that time. Watts letting Wilson have the ball at the very last moment on the first option of the wishbone. Third down and a half a yard to go. The total defensive statistics of Carolina are going to take a sharp downturn after this game. Oklahoma has been able to move the ball nearly every time they wanted to. Watts has got the first down as he hits the 35-yard line. Running right at their potential All-American, Donnell Thompson, number 76. I made a misstatement a few moments ago, Jim, when I said there hadn't been any punts in the first quarter. Carolina had had that one short punt. It was Oklahoma who has not been forced to punt the football yet. All at the 35-yard line as Oklahoma moves the sticks once again. They're up by seven points. And I think it is surprising. Well, it can't be surprising, Bud, because after all, Oklahoma is second in the nation of rushing offense, and they're putting that against the team that is number three in rushing defense. And that's yeah. what happened in the first quarter. 167 yards in the first quarter. If they duplicate that in the next three quarters, they'll be ahead of their average rushing gain for the season. Quick pitch back to Buster Rhymes, and they got a Carolina in trouble. Rhymes goes about nine yards to the 44-yard line before Daryl Nicholson and Tyrus Bratton stop him. This is a beautiful execution again. The reverse pivot and the quick pitch as we had Lawrence Taylor trying to force Watts. Rhines has got so much room to run there that he really was surprised. He almost couldn't keep his balance. He was so surprised to find so much open field. Oklahoma's game plan has been superb in negating that fine rushing defense of Carolina. They've had him guessing a lot. Whoops, slip and fall. Very close to the first down. Harry Standback, right? Right there on top, along with the nose guard, is Stanley Wilson just slipped and fell, and Paul Davis and Standback were right there. I believe, Jim, that uh, the movement of the ends to change the strong side from the weak side after 
Carolina has set their defense has worked thus far quite well for Oklahoma and been one of the reasons their running attack has moved the ball so effectively. Carolina's not out of the ball game. What they've got to find out is how to stop Oklahoma or they will be out of the ball game. Haven't slipped like they did the last time. Third down, one yard to go. That's the fullback. That's Wilson. He's got the first down. Time of possession, Jim, in that first quarter. Surprisingly, uh, North Carolina had the ball eight minutes and 54 seconds. Oklahoma only six minutes and six seconds. Bill Jackson made the stop of good sophomore Stanley Wilson. Wilson uh, on the short yardage, first handoff of the option. He found just enough daylight to slither through and pick up the first down. J.C. Watts just hasn't had to go to the air. He's made one throw. Barry Switz has got to be proud of his game plan as he looks on and proud of his team. They're executing beautifully. Here's Watts with the football, and Watts gets away from a couple of men, but not enough, and just barely back to the line of scrimmage. They throw a flag, so anxious are they to get to Watts, I think they hit him a little late. I don't know, Jim. That's uh, when you're as shifty as Watts is, and you, he breaks as many tackles as he breaks, and you're closing to try to support. It's awfully hard to stop your momentum. Referee Vance Carlson will tell us. Foul on North Carolina. First down. It is a spearing foul, not a late hit. You use that helmet, it becomes a weapon, and that's what they're trying to avoid in collegiate football and all of football, and that'll move the ball and give them a first down well inside Carolina territory at their own 39 yard line. First down, Oklahoma, which leads by seven against the undefeated and six ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. The uh, key to stopping the wishbone is stop them on first down. That's the first time that Carolina had done it. They came up with a penalty. Oklahoma's gains on first down run through them really quickly. 3, 34, 9, 5, 3, 23, 10, 7, and 9. Donnie Fontanet comes in for the first time today as tight end with a play. He's been in there before, but this time is used as a messenger and becomes a second tight end. They have two tight on offense and J.C. Watts this time no spearing he is thrown for a loss as Carolina begins to show a little bit on the last two plays with the notable exception of that spear that they can handle Watts a little bit better at least on these two plays. The defensive play here you watch it very carefully. The linebacker breaks to the outside they've got everybody coming in every gap and the pursuit Watts has no ability to let Wilson have the ball no ability to make the pitch out and he stopped for a two yard loss and that's the most effective defensive play that Carolina has made yet far and credit Lawrence Taylor their all American candidate number 98 with a great speed of pursuit to make the tackle and again they stack them up Harry Stanback making a tackle and now Oklahoma's running game slows for the moment at least as Wilson could not get much running room and it's third down and better than 10. Harry Stanback very quick. They've stopped him absolutely cold Jim on the last three downs. 14 to 7 the score Oklahoma 10 25 to go first half. And Oklahoma is going to take a time out to discuss it again the last time they did this they broke it for a touchdown. They're down well but we talked to both coaches. And Barry Switzer told us that he was expecting to run away from Lawrence Taylor and that he was expecting to use two tight ends and he has done that on more than one occasion today. But it's like an old saying in my family whatever he's doing right keep it up because it's been working very well and with a lot of exceptions last three plays. Well I think that uh, switching the strong side to the short side by moving those two ends has affected Carolina but they've made a very good adjustment to it. Another kind of football is Canadian football. And Wednesday night, November the 5th, when the election is all over, no political comment here, we'll go north of the border to get away from politics. 8 o'clock Eastern time, Toronto and Hamilton of the CFL. There is Dick Crum in the background there now, the coach of North Carolina, as we told you, out of Miami of Ohio, which spawned such fine coaches as Era Parsegian and Woody Hayes and Bo Schembechler and Johnny Pont all came out of Miami of Ohio never played as a varsity player or a scholarship player at all. Matter of fact he went to a college called Mount Union whereas Barry Switzer on the other side was the captain of the Southwestern Conference co-championship team at Arkansas. But they're both outstanding coaches. 
Valor splits out the tight end to the left. And Grayson comes to the right. Third down, 12 to go. Overstreet in motion, the pitch back, and Overstreet loses the ball out of bounds. And there's what they don't like to do. It's fourth down, and for the first time, really, Carolina has stopped them cold on uh, defensive plays. Overstreet, I don't think, would have gotten back hardly to the line of scrimmage. The option play, the quick pitch, and you can see that that time Watts was hit just as he pitched the ball. He threw it behind Overstreet. It went out of bounds. I think Overstreet had some room to run had the lateral been on target. Greg Poole is the deep man as along comes Keeling to kick the ball away. Whoops. Ball is off the side of his foot, may have been partially deflected, and Carolina's got its best field position of the day, nearly at the 35-yard line of the Tar Heels. Couldn't tell, Jim, maybe we can on the replay, whether the kick is blocked or whether he just felt the pressure. It took a little bit too long getting rid of the ball there. He drops the ball all right, and he just hit it badly. I don't think the kick was hit. It was a 13-yard punt. 14 to 7 to go. I should say 14 to 7. It is Oklahoma, and it is first and 10 to go for North Carolina. Richardson goes wide to the right. Harrison comes to the left. Rod Elkins has shown that he's got outstanding poise, the sophomore quarterback. And a game the biggest for Carolina more than 30 years, they tell us. And there's the big fullback, Billy Johnson, who has really been negated today. I think his longest run thus far has been about three yards. He averages four and a half yards. That time they changed the set from the I formation, had uh, two backs and what football people call a brown formation. And, uh, that did change the timing a little bit and the pace, but not the effectiveness of the play. Orlando Flanagan, number 53, playing right end today as Whaley has been moved for the most part to left end, made the stop. Second down and nine to go. Elkin still has the football, goes the football, and it is almost caught by Mark Smith, the freshman leaping high in the air, looking back into the sun field, and with a couple of the Oklahoma defenders right around him, almost made the catch. Uh, Carolina is moving their tight end across the formation also, which has the same effect on the defense that we've been describing, uh, the way Oklahoma moves their offensive ends, but Oklahoma only has one man to swing, and uh, that's their linebacker. They have a strong and a weak side inside linebacker, so it doesn't create quite as much confusion. Third and long, and Carolina on third and long has been very effective with the pass. Three wide receivers to the same side of the field, and Elkins rolls out to that side. Looking out, he is in trouble. Now comes back this way. Now throws as a man open, and it's off his hands. If Amos Lawrence could not hold on to it at the 40-yard line, would have been a first down. Tough catch to make, leaping sun in his eyes. But it stalls the attack of Carolina. Oklahoma has held, and Streeter comes on to kick the ball away. I'm very impressed with Elkins, Jim. That time he was truly pressured. He had the ability to stop, reverse his field, find a receiver downfield, and make a good throw. It almost was a completion. Streeter to kick the ball away. Had a beauty of a kick last time. And line drives this one. Jimerson, son in his face at the 19-yard line. And he had called for a fair catch, according to the official, and then moved. Jimerson said he did not. But I don't think he is now arguing too much. I really couldn't tell, Jim. I thought he was shading his eyes, but I don't, uh, that's one I of the things too. that uh, they uh, tell you not to do. Maybe we can see it here in the end zone. He's supposed to have his hand clearly above his head. We didn't quite pick up the start of the play enough to tell. Well, they're still standing at the 19-yard line, and they have not moved the ball backwards. 19 is where Jimerson caught the ball. His knee certainly was not on the ground. And now the official is going to come over, at least tell Dick Crum what's going on. Vance Carlson comes over saying, hey, how come if he runs with the ball after calling for a fair catch, it is not a penalty? Well, I don't think that he waved his arm. He didn't have it up there very long, but uh, those are always the judgment calls and every tough decision that an official makes. Well, but doesn't it have to be one or the other? I mean, if he did run and they said he called for a fair catch, it has to be a penalty. His knee was not down. He caught the ball in midair. And I just don't know why they blew it dead. Other than he may have uh, blown a whistle, and if he blew the whistle, then that takes care of it. Uh, he did also drop his handkerchief, as you can that see. That is called an there, inadvertent a whistle, right? I guess so. That's the only thing that I can see. But he's going to tell us, I think. 
After any signal for fair catch, the ball is dead as soon as the receiving team catches the football. First down. So that's the rule. If the ball well, is dead, it could I, be a I don't think like conduct uh, call. Uh, I I don't think or that's Or a delay correct. of the game call. Either one. one that's or two. right. Forty-five uh, yard kick, though, Jim. Keep I disagree fun. with Vance Carlson. <laughs> Watts hands the ball to Overstreet, and Overstreet picks up about three yards, and there's a penalty, and Carolina may have gotten it. Nope, they say that Overstreet. Or someone on that red squad made the fumble and Overstreet has coughed up the football on a couple of occasions today. Once right at the goal line. Nine minutes to go. Second quarter. It's 14 to 7. Oklahoma. This is the power play. The inside belly play we call it. Watts turns. Gives the ball to Overstreet. He doesn't have a lot of he's tried to change hands with the ball there just as he got to the line of scrimmage. The ball got away from him but was recovered by an Oklahoma man. Buster rhymes in motion. The ball is given to Stanley Wilson, who got another yard or two, and that is all at the 24-yard line. Carolina says, well, there's a little... Tell you, coming out of there is Lee Schaffer, and he is really hot. Really hot. And somebody may be hurt. Very quickly... I believe that is Stanley Wilson down there, and so if too. it is, it is a very poignant moment in this crowd because somewhere in this crowd, Stanley Wilson's mother has flown all the way in from Carson City, California to see the game. His father could not make it because he had to work, and Wilson is down and hurt, and I'm sure that she is upset. I don't know if it's an arm or not, bud. Well, he was in a great deal of traffic as he went to the ground. And we just have to wait till he gets up and uh, hope that it's not a serious injury. The Oklahoma trainers came on the field like jets. They apparently do something that happened. Wilson is getting up, or at least sitting up. On the last five plays, Jim, Carolina has just ignored any pass threat, and the whole secondary is just absolutely closed with the snap of the football, which makes it very difficult to make a running attack go, no matter how effective you may be. Well, apparently, well, I can't tell from here, but it doesn't look as though he's seriously hurt. I think he just got stung a little bit. And that makes Mrs. Wilson a lot happier. All of us happier. <laughs> to see her son walk off the field. It is third down and five to go. 8.35 to go. In the second quarter, 14 to 7, Oklahoma. Over undefeated North Carolina. A brilliant sunny afternoon in Owens Field with this sellout crowd. Looking on because there are representatives from nine different bowls. Oklahoma still hopes it will go to the Orange Bowl, which the Big 8 champion does, but there are other bowls interested, of course, not only in Oklahoma, but in North Carolina. Carolina defeating at the Gator Bowl last year. Michigan. And Carolina undefeated this year, are looking for a possible shot at the national championship. But as Bud Wilkinson's rule of thumb goes, if you lose a game, forget that national championship, unless everybody else does. All right, third down five. Watts. Watts, first down. Unbalanced line that time, Jim, to the across the field side of the screen, and uh, Carolina moved over. They came back to the short side. You get there very, very quickly. The strategy worked for the first down. John Brugos, who just came in, made the stop, but too late. And Watts, as we said, already has gained much more. The average for an entire game for the opposition thus far for Carolina has been 76 yards per game. Watts by himself has 79 in this game. And we're just midway through the second quarter. And Oklahoma has uh, just used their last time out. And I don't know what caused that uh, call. Uh, first down, you, you get a small killing of the clock uh, by moving the chains in college football. And somehow they didn't have it all together and felt it important to take the time out. With Stanley Wilson on the sidelines, Weldon Ledbetter, the sophomore from St. Louis, number 43, becomes a fullback. So thus far, Barry Switzer has used J.C. Watts, Chet Winters, Buster Rahm, Stanley Wilson, Weldon Ledbetter, and David Overstreet. Jimmy Quicktillis and Domingo Delia will be on next Thursday, or I should say a week from Thursday, November the 13th, in our top-ranked boxing, which is a weekly feature. And there's our light heavyweight battle. Mike Rossman, remember him? He used to have the championship. And Luke... Lupiano. Boxing very popular here on ESPN, your source for sports. 
There is a group from North Carolina here because the Carolina wears that Carolina blue and it's across the field from us and down in the right hand corner. Now they have made the long trip from the Tar Heel State. First down 10 Oklahoma they lead by seven we're midway in the second quarter Steve Rhodes goes wide to the left Overstreet is in motion now is now setting up as a flanker and now goes in motion Watts goes back and now just comes straight up the middle Watts first down at the 43 with Tyrus Bratton number three making the hit Watts just rolled back looked down the middle was open to him he carries for the first down I do believe at the 44 yard line. He got hit uh, very, very solidly that time, but he's a strong, strong runner. This is a pass play call. He rolls out. You can see him looking for his receivers. Then he looks upfield, finds all that daylight, and said, why not? Watch him make it move here. There is ice on the left shoulder of Stanley Wilson, who went out moments ago. That's as much as we can tell you. That is Ledbetter, the fullback. Maybe getting a yard or two out to the 45, 46 yard line. Lee Schaffer, number 49, an inside linebacker, made the stop. There's been one notable time when we've called Lawrence Taylor, Donnell Thompson, on a couple of occasions. And it is said by pro scouts that there are four probable number one draft choices off this Carolina team. This is an outstanding team. And I would say Taylor and Thompson and Wooten, their guard, and famous Amos Lawrence, their running back, might be those four. I'd agree, Jim. Second down, Overstreet in motion. Watts with the football, pitches back to Overstreet, who lost the ball again! It belongs to Carolina! Lee Schaffer jumps on it at the 41 and a half yard line. He's a. Uh... Makes a good pitch. This is a reverse pivot. Guard leading around. Watts has room to run. He pitches the ball. It's just a little bit too strong. He caught the ball, but then as he was trying to put it away, he somehow couldn't quite get the handle on the ball, and it dropped out of his hands, and Carolina has recovered. Lawrence Taylor made the hit of Watts, and Schaffer made the fumble recovery, and Carolina by far and away has his best field position on a changeover as the ball goes to Kelvin Bryant. Running inside and picking up perhaps five yards down to the 36 yard line of Oklahoma. Where the last man to get up. Was Mike Coast. Oklahoma has had uh, two turnovers now Jim. Uh, they fumbled the ball three times recovered. One of the three. Second down. Second man through is Kelvin Bryant again. They gang tackle him, but it's going to be third and a yard and a half to go. Carolina can power this ball. The running attack, it will change everything about the game. Oklahoma's defense has been very solid against the run, and they've been burned by the pass. If you can make both sides of the game go, then you've got the defense in trouble. Third down on the yard. Gary Lowell made the hit. On that last one by Bryant. Hailback has the first down. That is Bryant again. Lawrence is on the sidelines, and Bryant is inside the 31, and that is all he needs for the first down. Calvin Bryant is a sophomore to Tarboro, North Carolina, who runs, by the way, even though we say he's an inside runner. He runs a 9 300 actually he's been timed at 9.29 outstanding speed Riley uh, cut shot the gap here you'll see Riley from the left of the screen come roaring through there he is but he was a little bit off balance couldn't make the tackle and Bryant picks up the first down Flanker and split into the right side and that is Kelvin Bryant again getting some tough yardage inside the 35 yard line and that is about all you can see Mike Coast getting up and Scott Dawson getting up both of them in on the tackle. Second down, and let's just give him a gain of two yards. Second and eight, as Victor Harrison comes in that flanker back. 4:45 left in an exciting first half, and it is 14 to seven, Oklahoma. John Richardson is wide to the right. Harrison has come to the left. This time it is not the I formation. They have split their backs in the backfield. Richardson in motion, and here comes Elkins rolling out in trouble. Gets the ball away. Has a man there. 
First down, Richardson takes the ball out of bounds at the nine yard line. First and goal to go, North Carolina. Now, most teams have their quarterback dropping back into the pocket to throw. This team doesn't throw any drop back passes. They're all sprint out passes and Elkins handles them extremely well. He's not getting much pressure. There's the two backs going the wrong way. He comes back on a semi bootleg. Finds the receiver as he turns the corner. Drops it over the linebackers. In front of the safety men. And they now have first down on the nine yard line. But every time I see a game like this and we see them to see them week after week I think how blessed we are with the football schedule on ESPN. It has been outstanding and we got another one today. First down and nine to go. Elkin starts. He's got two lead blockers in front of him. Gets inside down to about the seven and a half yard line with Mike Riley holding on as he goes down number 50. There's only one one wide receiver out on this play. I think that it's really a option pass run. He's got his wide receiver out but you can see both men blocking. However the Oklahoma outside linebacker Whaley knocked down two offensive men and that made it possible for the next pursuit men to make the tackle. The very dangerous pass catcher Mike Chatham number 88 is in the ball game. That is lining up on the left side. Elkins. Banks. Rolls. Throws. Off the hands of Chatham. The man that just came in. And that was a tough sun catch, I believe, but he was looking more away from the sun and toward the quarterback and dropped the football. Elkins uh, is more impressive uh, every time he makes a move, Jim. He's pressured here. Inside running fake. He rolls it to the outside. Starts to run. Puts the ball right on target, and Chatham simply cannot hold it. But a great play by the quarterback, Elkins. Let's watch it one more time. There's the inside fake, not too much of a fake. Fake of the throw. Juke, move the ball, hit it, and the ball is on target, but uh, incomplete pass. Third down and goal to go. The ball on the eight yard line. Carolina doesn't want to stall out here. Had a touchdown in its grasp and dropped it in Chatham. Elkins gets a good block, has time, and it's going to be intercepted. Nope. Lowell drops the football. Well, those are trade-offs, Jim. A touchdown and a field goal prevents him if they've uh, been able to hang on to that one. Well, I tell you, as we watch Gary Lowell drop the football, I remember Casey Stengel with the old Mets. Can anybody around here play the game? Now we say, can anybody around here catch the football? That's about right. Uh, Elkins is moving to his left. He can't decide whether to throw because everybody's pretty well covered. He throws it downfield. Lowell is right there in front of the ball. It was a little low for him, but it's a catch that he could have made. Jeff Hayes loves it from here, but he's missed field goals almost this short before. But this is his hash mark that he likes as he line drives it. No good. Hayes has missed him from 33, 27, 29, and 39, and missed one from 25 yards. And Carolina comes away empty after the field goal missed by Hayes from the hash mark that he likes to kick from. Let's take a look at this again and see if he got a good snap from center and a good hold. It was a line drive kick. There's a ball on the way. The ball is put down nicely and he simply hooked the ball. It's like his foot was a little bit to the outside of it. It came across line drive miss. Three minutes 34 seconds to go in the first half. This is that kind of football game. Oklahoma's got the football again. Carolina had a golden opportunity and came away with nothing after having first down at the nine yard line. Coming this way as Buster Rhymes scissored as he gets to the 25 yard line. It's the first time we've had the across the field reverse. Uh, Ryan lined up at to the wing back position. They felt that Carolina was moving so fast with the movement of the backfield that they might get a move in the wrong way. But this is a good defensive football team. Donnell Thompson came on to make the stop along with Harry Standback. It's a gain of six at a second down and four. And now timeout has been called again with three minutes and 14 seconds to go. They can ill afford to lose Standback. Uh, he's a very fine football player, 262 pounds senior. And he plays one defensive tackle. Thompson is a 257, a great defensive player. And they flank Davis, who, as Jim has already said, is a rather small nose guard, but very quick. He only weighs 210. So that is Harry Standback out of Rockingham, North Carolina, who is down on the field at the moment. That should bring on John Brugus, but what more importantly, they just hope that it is not a serious injury. As Carolina has had its troubles today, Oklahoma has moved almost freely until the last possession of the football when Carolina was able to rise up and 
take it to Oklahoma. After last week not having a single turnover, Oklahoma is kind of back in their normal pattern. They fumbled the ball four times, have lost it twice, once when they had a first down on the one-yard line. John Brugus does replace stand back. Buster Rhymes getting a lot of play now over Chet Winters as the left halfback is flanked. Straight ahead. As they pick up the first down. Oklahoma has used up all their timeouts, Jim, so with uh, just a little less than three minutes to go, they've got to move it quickly if they expect to get into scoring position. Ledbetter is stopped by Nicholson and Thompson. First down at the 31-yard line. Wilson has not come back. Rhymes remains in there. Overstreet has not been substituted at all and is right now flanked wide to the right. And here's Watts after faking to Rhymes. Down the field, and it's going to be intercepted. Rhodes makes the tackle of the man who did the intercepting, who helps him up, and that's Greg Poole, who's having an outstanding day today at the 18-yard line. Carolina takes over with two and a half minutes to go in the half. I don't think that really uh, hurt that badly. It was a good throw. Poole had him perfectly covered, as you can see. But it's going to be hard for Oklahoma to score with all their times outs gone. and. Uh, by moving it down the field here, Poole watching the ball very carefully. He looks it in perfectly. Looked like he was the offensive receiver. But I would call this football game a spectator's game. It has done and had just about everything. Greg Poole with the interception, which for him was his first of the year, according to our statistics. First down from the 18-yard line. Second man through is Amos Lawrence, and he is breaks away. Look out! But they call it dead at the 21-yard line. Lawrence standing all by himself. Not a very shocked Daryl Son G coming over, realizing he probably would have no shot. I thought he was clearly stopped here, Jim, but we'll take a look at it again. As you can see him breaking back to the inside. He's hit. He's held there down. He was fighting it off, and I'm sure the referee did blow the whistle there. He, however, did not ever hit the ground. Now they mark it at the 20-yard line and give him a gain of a yard and a half at a second down. Harrison goes wide to the right. Two minutes and three seconds left in the half. Richardson in motion to the left. Second man through. Famous Amos Lawrence gets outside. Gets across the 20. What a move there before he is scissored at the 25-yard line. Well, it'll be third down and a long three to go for the first down. That it's a good indication of how shifty, quick, and fast famous Amos Lawrence is. Watch him here as he breaks to the outside, slips the first tackle beautifully, now has running room to the outside. The contained man turns him in. That's Jimerson, and then he really gets belted, but he held the football very nicely. Lowell, after Jimerson turned him in, made the stop, and now Amos Lawrence is very close to the first down. And it would appear, Jim, that Carolina's going to run it out. Uh, they've got three timeouts left, but they make the first down on the ground here with a minute and 15 seconds left. They haven't been putting the ball in the air. Mike Riley, strong side linebacker, made the stop, and time has been called by the officials for this measurement. Perhaps, Bud. Carolina just figures if they could run it out to where they could throw it without getting hurt, they might then open up. But down there, as they were inside the 20, you're the coach, not me. It is first down. We'll see now because they've got a little operating room now near the 29-yard line. Well, one of the things that you worry about from a coaching standpoint is that if you've only been able to put seven points on the board, true, they did miss a field goal. How are you going to move it 82 yards in a minute and a half uh, when you have not been able to score much more than that uh, in the previous 28 minutes? So you just try to play it calm and cool. And go to the dressing room down by seven points. Elkins, what a sidestep move he makes there. Now he throws a football and it is dropped. Son G was over there to defend. Billy Johnson could not hold on to it. Elkins is something. He is uh, as mobile as anybody we've seen all year, Jim. He's just a sophomore. He's strong and he's got excellent balance and excellent vision. Oklahoma's not been able to get to him, even though they've been very close on several occasions. Sharp, the number one quarterback, went down before the season opened with a, a broken ankle, as I recall, and Elkins has taken over, but he was expected to push for the number one job even before the season began. 53 seconds to go. Second down, and this time the ball is handed to Lawrence, and Lawrence, look out. 
what moves he's making, no matter what happens, that is a great effort by Lawrence, and Jemerson brings him down along with Lowell. You just don't get him with one man, and sometimes you don't get him with two or three. Let's watch all of these moves because this is beautiful. This is what a great running back is supposed to be able to do. Draw play, and uh, Oklahoma played it well. They didn't take the bait. You can see him bouncing around all over the field. <laughs> Juke, stop, turn, twist. Finally, they'll get him down. It is third down and long with 17 seconds to go. And now they're letting that clock run down. Carolina had a first down at the nine. Oklahoma the ball and fumbled it on the one inch line. And they're going to just let this run down. Long count in motion. That's it. The half is over. And it has been an outstanding and exciting first half. And the score at the end of the first half of play as a flag is dropped after the gun. We'll see what happens there as they begin the second half. It's Oklahoma 14 and undefeated North Carolina 7. almost here and wind's going to get you and cold's going to get you and high fuel bills are going to get you because you still haven't added more insulation to your attic. So do it now. Get more Owens Corning fiberglass insulation and add another layer to put your house in the pink. See your dealer or contractor. Buy more Owens Corning fiberglass insulation now before winter gets you one team that plays for keeps. It's a big team. Its color is green. The big green team of National Car Rental. We play for keeps to keep you coming back. We try to answer calls in under three rings at one of the most modern reservation centers. When the GM car you want passes our maintenance checklist, you know it's dependable. That's how we play for keeps. And that's why I keep coming back 16 times this past year. The big green team. 12,000 people worldwide. We play for keeps. Jim Simpson, Bud Wilkinson at halftime, and as the Oklahoma band comes on the field, Bud, I said about this game toward the end of the first half, I think it's a spectator's game. I'm thoroughly enjoying it myself. I think it's a coach's game, too, Jim. Uh, the movement by the offensive teams after they've set their formation to pressure the defensive people into either switching all the way across the field with them or being in a position that they're not used to playing. Both teams have done that very effectively. And I think it very Switzer who was going up against a team that is fast, quick, and suddenly talented on defense, has come up with an outstanding game plan, as you say, because already they've gained, oh, maybe twice what Carolina normally gives up in an entire football game. Well, I believe that uh, Carolina did a good job of adjusting in the second quarter. Oklahoma moved the ball almost at will on their first three possessions, but the last three times they've had the ball, they've had a lot of trouble moving it, and they've got to come up with uh, another change of plans uh, in the second half if they're going to move it with their running attack. Well, you know, they've often said that a quarterback gets too much of the blame if a team loses, too much of the credit if they win, but against Texas, J.C. Watts got a lot of the blame. Seven turnovers. Today, J.C. Watts has been superb. Difference in the ball game. We're at halftime. Oklahoma 14 and North Carolina 7. This book tells you how to cut your costs for food, medicine, insurance, and gasoline. This book can tell you how the events taking place in the world will affect you and your way of life. This book tells you how to get money from the government for housing, education, medical care, or travel expenses. This book can help you know just a little more about everything than the other guy. This book tells you what foods to eat to stay healthy and what drugs to avoid if you're sick. And this book can give you confidence, self-assurance, and a wealth of knowledge. This is the special Newsweek edition of Help, the indispensable guide for consumer information. And this is Newsweek. Help retails for $6.95, but it's yours free when you buy 24 issues of Newsweek for $15, only half the newsstand price. So call now, 1-800-453-9000. Get 24 weeks of Newsweek at half the newsstand price. And upon payment, your free copy of the special Newsweek edition of Help. That's 1-800-453-9000. It's toll free, and major credit cards are accepted. Carlin River in Farmshire is still in the hands of the by building a pontoon bridge across the...
Very pleasant. Good morning to you, everybody. I'm Tom Pippins. Welcome back to the ESPN Sports Center. And of course, we hope you're enjoying NCAA football on ESPN. And speaking, of course, of college football, let's check the top 20 scoreboard and see how the teams fared on Saturday and Saturday night. We start right off with a great big upset. Number one, Alabama, previously undefeated, losing at Mississippi State by a score of six to three. It was Arizona dumping and upsetting number two, UCLA, 23 to 17. Number three, Notre Dame, still undefeated, 33, Navy, nothing. And number four, Georgia at home, defeating South Carolina by a score score of 13 to 10. South Carolina, of course, ranked number 14. Georgia is 8 and 0 on the season. As far as the Tulsa at Florida State game is concerned, number 5 Florida State 45 and Tulsa just two. And here's one you'll be seeing on ESPN. We hope you're enjoying it on ESPN. At halftime from Norman, Oklahoma, Jim Simpson and Bud Wilkinson. It is the Sooners of Oklahoma 14 and the North Carolina Tar Heels 7. Elsewhere in college football, among those ranked in the top 20, number 7 Nebraska took care of number 15 Missouri 38 to 16. It was Southern Cal number 8 in the nation 60. California 7, Southern Cal has been tied once, yet to look at defeat number 1 in the fall of 1980. Number 9, Ohio State 48, Michigan State 16. Number 10, Pittsburgh all over Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. You could say the Orangemen were crushed 43 to 6. San Jose State 30, an upset over Baylor. 22 and here's one you'll be seeing on your total sports network number 12 texas losing for the second week in a row texas tech winning at home 24 20 that was a wild affair texas tech took a big lead had to hang on you'll enjoy it i'm sure on espn number 13 penn state over miami of florida 27 to 12 number 17 byu 83 hapless texas el paso just seven number 18 michigan 35 you'll see this one on espn and indiana no score rice has upset number 19 arkansas in arkansas by a score of 17 16 and number 20 purdue 52 northwestern 31 in a wild and woolly scoring affair from college football, we go to the National Basketball Association to check out the scores for you. Milwaukee on Saturday night, 99, Atlanta 93, Indiana 113, New Jersey 100. It was the New York Knicks, 111, Washington 93, and Philadelphia behind a career high, 45 from the doctor. The Sixers have won eight in a row, Philadelphia 117, Boston 113. Phoenix 127 and Kansas City 100 for Phoenix. Off to a marvelous start in 1980-81. The Suns 10 and 1. Chicago 122, Detroit 100. It was Denver 123 and Seattle 118. Utah 95, Portland 87. Utah's rookie Daryl Griffith had 37 points on Friday night. Last night he threw in 30 points. Golden State wins at home over San Antonio 123 to 108. An interesting situation as far as that's concerned. George Gervin in a losing cause, 42 points. The Spurs are 9-2 and two and a season-high 36 points in a winning effort for San uh, Golden State's Lloyd Free. And we're going to take just a few minutes now to bring you these commercial words and then we will return to Norman, Oklahoma for more NCAA football. years ago at Annapolis, I didn't think I'd make it. I had just three months to live. New treatments helped me beat cancer. And I helped myself too. As soon as I could, I trained, worked out, ran, though I could hardly walk. Now, with the help of cancer research, I've made it. And I'm not alone. Almost two million Americans are living proof your contributions count. Cancer can be beat. The eyes of ESPN will be on Texas Sunday as the Longhorns try to rebound from their only loss of the season as seen on your Total Sports Network when Jam Jones, Donnie Little, and the gang visit Texas Tech. Then it's the debut of the expanded Sunday night edition of Sports Center. A full 60 minutes of the day's scores and highlights. More football follows with an Atlantic Coast Conference clash between hard-rushing Clemson and pass-happy Wake Forest. Another big night of football Sunday on ESPN. 14 to 7, Oklahoma. The Oklahoma Boomer Sooner Band is on the far side of the field and now playing the Air Force song. They just concluded with the Army High High He. We're in the field artillery, and I'm certain that we're going to hear the anchors away before it's all over. A salute to the military here at Owens Field in Norman, Oklahoma.
A Marine hymn, of course. Bud Wilkinson on the stand for this one. <laughs> we certainly should. Played this one rather strongly last week, Jim, when uh, maybe upset Washington. Reserve units from the Air Force, the Navy, the Army, and the Marine Corps. Armed Services Day here at Owens Field in Norman, Oklahoma, where the Sooners lead North Carolina by the score of 14 to 7. Beautiful day, sunlit, temperature in the 80s. And now as the ceremonies go on on the field, I'll tell you here at Owen Field in Oklahoma, it is Carolina having trouble in the first quarter, adjusting against the two tight end offense and the game plan of Barry Switzer, making a little bit better adjustment in the second quarter, and each team, well, having problems. And that Overstreet has fumbled a couple of times and also fumbled down at the one-inch line, and that Carolina had a first down on the nine-yard line and could not take it in. It has been that kind of exciting football game. And at halftime, the statistics at Owen Field show. You can see how effective the Oklahoma rushing attack has been. 215 yards rushing and zero yards passing. The balance is much better for North Carolina. They've had 90 yards passing the football. Yard rushing. The time of possession is almost even. North Carolina has had it 15 minutes and 53 seconds. Oklahoma 14 and 7. Oklahoma, however, has had three turnovers, only one by North Carolina. And if you keep up with such things as statistics, which you've just shown you, already Oklahoma has gained per game average given up by North Carolina to the rush. It is 76 yards that Carolina normally gives up per game, has given up 215. And the turnovers, as Bud told you. We're at halftime, and when we come back, the second half will begin with Oklahoma in front, 14 to 7, and Carolina trying to figure what to do to stay undefeated and in the bowl picture. Watch out. Winter's almost here, and wind's going to get you, and cold's going to get you, and high fuel bills are going to get you, because you still haven't added more insulation to your attic. So do it now. Get more Owens Corning fiberglass insulation and add another layer to put your house in the pink. See your dealer or contractor. Buy more Owens Corning fiberglass insulation now, before winter gets you. Your Total Sports Network brings you over 400 hours of the very best at NCAA football this fall with five big games each week. You'll see Ohio State, Alabama, Southern Cal, Nebraska, Penn State, Oklahoma, and a host of other top 20 teams as ESPN presents the most complete coverage of college football anywhere. NCAA football on ESPN. Texas at Texas Tech, Sunday, 8 p.m. and Monday at midnight Eastern time on your Total Sports Network. Simpson with Bud Wilkinson. We're about to start the second half. It's 14 to 7 Oklahoma and Bud. There was a penalty flag as we said at the end of the first half. And it went against Oklahoma. And therefore Carolina will kick off from the 45 yard line of the Sooners. Uh, the penalty was called after the play had been blown dead Jim. Otherwise uh, 
Carolina would have had another offensive play a penalty against a defense while a ball is in play at the end of a half gives another play to the offensive team. This penalty was assessed after the ball had been blown dead. The 15 yard penalty is assessed at the start of the second half and so it's going to be a short kickoff for Carolina. You just wonder is Jeff Hayes going to try to stick it in the end zone is he going to try to perhaps pull an onside kick because the field position for Oklahoma would not be that great. Going to try to loop it in the air. We'll know in a moment he's going to kick it along a sideline but it's going to go out of bounds and that's going to cost him five yards and move him back. He still got an easy kick into the end zone but uh, you were absolutely right. Oklahoma however was in a return formation to prevent against the onside kick. They had uh, nine men within 15 yards of the ball. Now they move the ball back five yards and they will kick off from the 50 yard line. Talking here in the booth at halftime while you were away. We came to the same conclusion. We have seen an outstanding football game and Bud and I and ESPN have seen some outstanding football games along the way. The Stanford upset of Oklahoma Pittsburgh losing its first game the Florida State Texas being upset by SMU and here is undefeated North Carolina at a real foot race now it is 14 to 7 with 30 minutes to play and Oklahoma again thinking onside kick. This ball will go up fumbled into the end zone by Overstreet. He's not going to bring it out. He's got to take it because he took it out. He took the ball. Now he's going to be Hit tackled. Two. His knee went down. They're going to say at about the two yard line. And Overstreet picked it up went into the end zone. And there were confusing calls there. He went back into the end zone. They said you better run with it buddy. So we'll turn it over to our buddy Bud to see what happened. Got to see it on the replay to be sure myself. It was uh, kind of a driving kick, sort of an onside type driving kick. Overstreet playing the ball here. He makes the catch of the ball. The ball goes back into the end zone. And he goes down in the end zone, and the ball should be dead there with his knee on the ground. He did not put his knee on the ground out where the referees have got the ball spotted. He decided to run with the ball when the whistle didn't blow, but I don't know how they can put the ball where they did. The fact that he touched the ball has nothing to do with it. No, the momentum of the kick put the ball in the end zone, and uh, Switzer should be very upset. He is. There is no reason to make that call. The momentum of the kick put the ball in the end zone. He put his knee down in the end zone. That brings the play is over. That is the second controversial call of this game. One against Carolina, one against Oklahoma. They'll try to bring it out, and Ledbetter gets it across the five-yard line. It'll be second down at about seven, as Daryl Nicholson made the stop. Now, Stanley Wilson went out with what appeared to us to be a shoulder in the second quarter. So, Weldon Ledbetter is in, number 43 at fullback. Buster Rhymes has been playing most of the time over Winters at left halfback. Overstreet's gone all the way at right halfback, and Wilson will probably not be back. It is the shoulder we are told. Winters, Overstreet, and Ledbetter backing up J.C. Watts, the offensive back line, and that is Winters carrying the football, and Paul Davis, the nose guard, makes the stop, number 34. Very unusual play from the wishbone formation. A cutback across the formation. In the design of the play, you believe that Carolina is sliding so fast with the first fake that you can go against the grain on them, but they're filling every offensive hole with their line and linebackers, and there's really not much daylight to run. Lawrence Taylor's not been a factor, but I think that Oklahoma's plays have been designed to go away from him with a man peeling back to stop his onrush from behind. Oklahoma's done that very well, popping into the secondary, and still on his feet across the 45-yard line. What a play, Ledbetter. 40-yard line, first and 10, and they're in Carolina territory. The number one team against scoring the number three in the nation against the rush is having a tough time today against the number two team on offense rushing the football. They're having a field day. Beautiful execution of the wishbone. Excellent blocking and uh, Ledbetter almost had speed enough to take this all away, but it's a fast, fast Carolina secondary. They're able to run him down. First and 10 from the 40. That is J.C. Watts pitches the ball back to Winters. Winters is going to be run out and out of bounds he goes with Lee Schaffer. And now from the other side of the field, some tempers and some booze as Schaffer, a big tough junior from Durham, runs him out of bounds. He'll mark the ball at the 35 yard line. It'll be second down and five. They thought he was hit after he was out of bounds. He may be right, but when you're in the game, you don't feel the sidelines that well. 
Oklahoma trying to get a jump on a North Carolina team that they've not lost to in history. Matter of fact, the Sooners have not lost to an Atlantic Coast Conference team in history. Second down five. First man through is Ledbetter, very close to the first down before he is thrown back. That wide fake, uh, after you've handed the ball off to Ledbetter, draws some attention always because Watts handles the ball beautifully, and it's very difficult to tell whether he's given it to the fullback or whether he's going to pull it out himself. Schaffer and Nicholson made the stop third down and inches, and I tell you, nearly every time we show a pileup, words are being said on both sides. These players are talking or yelling at one another. Well, this game is for all the marbles for Carolina. If they can win it, they're going to be undefeated. Uh, Oklahoma needs to win it to build themselves up in the national championship. J.C. Watts has the first down. Inside a 30-yard line. Again, the inside linebacker, Schaffer and Nicholson, stopped. Unbalanced line to the top of the screen here. Carolina had a little trouble getting their spacing. Watts takes a little move to the outside, and you can see that the offensive line blocked remarkably well in a short yardage situation. They weren't able to fill every gap because they were still adjusting a little bit to the unbalanced line Oklahoma. Jack Perry comes in and Paul Davis comes out as nose guard on first down Oklahoma. Straight ahead goes Ledbetter inside the 20 yard line. Taurus Bratton number three the left cornerback has to make the stop. We keep and Oklahoma's rolling bud. Well we keep talking about the great ball carrying of the Oklahoma backs the great faking of Watts but Obrey Crouch Bechtold Key and Culver, the offensive line, are the people that make it happen. You hear about famous Amos Lawrence and Kelvin Bryant. They each had more than 100 yards last week. Out of the tailback position, Watts already has more than 100 yards for Oklahoma. Second down and eight. Oh, sick. I said second and eight. It was about second and about two. They had gained eight yards. Standback makes the stop, so he's back in the ball game. Ledbetter stopped, and they're going to say that he only got a yard, but his third and a yard to go. The Carolina 18-yard line. Carolina linebackers Nicholson and Schaffer have had a very hard afternoon. You can see him closing here, but look at the blocking of that Oklahoma line. They bounce off fairly well, but the Oklahoma linemen come off the ball so well, they get to the linebackers before they really have taken a step forward. Steve Rhodes has brought in the play. Carolina defense bunched. Overstreet breaks it inside the 10 yard line. Everybody along the line of scrimmage, once he got one block, he was into the secondary. Got to say again, that Oklahoma line really comes off the ball. Watch him move. They move right with the football. This is the power play, the inside belly play. Overstreet reads the blocking. Looked as though he might take it into the end zone, but we had a fine tackle by Streeter. Remember, this drive started at the two-yard line of Oklahoma. Ledbetter's big run was the big play. First and goal to go at the eight-yard line. J.C. Watts, J.C. Watts, J.C. Watts. Touchdown, second of the day, third for Oklahoma. Yard drive. Four minutes off the clock. Let's take a look at it quickly. There's the fake to Ledbetter. Watts keeps the ball. He runs one by one man all of the time. And he's not only got strength, he's got great speed. His speed is kind of a shifty speed. You don't realize how fast he is until he runs past you. Rhodes holding, Keeling kicking. It is 21 to 7. And there's still. Nearly 26 minutes of play, but the Tar Heels of North Carolina had better come unstuck because they're sitting on just seven points. They have won seven in a row without a defeat. What's the scoring play again on this marvelous four minute drive by Oklahoma? The fake to Ledbetter. That freezes the inside a little bit. Ledbetter moves the outside to help on the blocking. Watch the stiff arms one man, then turns the corner, turns it upfield, and is into the end zone. His 11th touchdown of his senior season here at Oklahoma. I know, Jim, that Carolina just doesn't believe anybody can run the football against them like this, but uh, there isn't anybody executes the wishbone uh, as well as Oklahoma does with their running attack. They have yet to complete a forward pass, and they've thrown two. One was intercepted, and one was incomplete. It is said that good defense beats good offense. At this moment, good offense is beating the good defense of North Carolina. Mark Smith. 
And Vic Harrison are deep, and Keeling will kick off. A lot of time to go, but Oklahoma's up by two, and what's more important, when they get the football, they roll with it. And now for the first time in this half, Carolina's going to get the football. Mark Smith is going to put his knee down. Come out to the 20-yard line where Rod Elkins, Amos Lawrence, Billy Johnson come out. Wide receivers are Richardson and Harrison, and they usually switch. Sheldon Robinson, the tight end, and the crowd is for the Oklahoma offense as it comes off the field and for the Oklahoma defense as it goes on the field. And the buff blue of Carolina across the way, very, very quiet. The white and blue pom-poms are not being waved at all. Their team is in trouble down by two touchdowns. Harrison comes to the right. Richardson drops off as a flanker back, now starts in motion. Second man through is Amos Lawrence, and he gets a yard or two, and that is all. Every possession is critical, Jim, in a game because you don't get too many of them. This is the most important one thus far for Carolina. They need to move the football here. They need to get some points on the board. Johnny Lewis led that charge as the Oklahoma defense is all pumped up. Mike Chatham comes back in. In the first half, with the exception of the one play that uh, Amos Lawrence broke, the second play of the game, they've stopped the run very well, but they've had a great deal of trouble against Elkins passing. Oh, he is an outstanding-looking quarterback. With the football, throws the football, and has Billy Johnson. Johnson at the 24-yard line. That is a gain of two yards. It is third down and six to go. Run out of bound by Son G. He was waiting for him, Jim. That pass thrown that short you can't afford to move up in front of the man but uh, he closed when that ball was in the air and it was a fine tackle form tackle Mark Smith the freshman from Fayetteville comes in and Harrison comes out as a wide receiver for Carolina big play or they got to kick the ball right back to the red hot Oklahoma Sooners long count Elkins rolling Elkins being pressured Elkins getting away. Elkins throwing. Has a man. It's going to be intercepted by Lowell at the 42-yard line. And down he goes at the 35. The fourth interception of the year for Lowell. He underthrew Chatham, and Lowell was right there. The sophomore from Sherman, Texas, puts the Sooners in business. I've been uh, waiting for that to happen, Jim. He scrambled beautifully all day. Tries to turn the corner here. Oklahoma won't let him. He cuts back, and he's got good speed, good acceleration. He's gone way across the field now. He finally thinks he sees a man open. He was slightly open, but the ball was overthrown. The interception made. Oklahoma has made their second interception, and they're in beautiful field position. And Oklahoma has a chance to nail this shot. They get a touchdown here. That is Overstreet carrying the football. Paul Davis makes the stop. Larry Winters is coming into the defensive backfield at the cornerback spot for Tyrus Bratton. Winters number 48. Second down and seven to go. The ball at the 32-yard line. 21 to seven now. 28 might be just too much for the Tar Heels. who have only shown early foot offensively. Grayson goes wide to the right. Nine representatives from nine different bowls are here looking on. A.C. Watts turns the corner, cuts inside, first down, down to the 21-yard line. It's a tough offense to defense because if you keep going for the fullback all the time, you lose the support of your linebackers in the wide play, and both Wilson and Ledbetter have faked inside so well that they've frozen them. Watts finds big, big daylight to the outside, cuts back inside, and uses his power and his strength to pick up the first down. Donnell Thompson made the stop. Now they put the nose of the football on the 20-yard line. Results are the same. It is a first down. That wishbone runs so effectively today with the catalyst being J.C. Watts. Watts with the football. Picks up another five. Down to the 15, maybe the 14-yard line before Calvin Daniels. Number 93, the linebacker on that side, made the tackle. They were in uh, two tight ends at that time, and they left both ends where they were rather than shifting them, and I think they caught Carolina waiting for the shift. North Carolina, the Tar Heel State says this is their biggest football game in 32 years. 
Watts, 124 yards on 13 carries. And the whole team gives up about 76 per game, or has until this game. Straight ahead. That better carries the football down to about the 10-yard line where Lee Schaffer makes the tackle along with Steve Streeter. He's just short of the first down. Third down and inches to go again. You almost wish if you're a Carolina supporter he'd made the first down because presuming that they make it here, you've got five shots instead of only four from the 10-yard line. Time has been called by Oklahoma, and this is the second time on third and very short that Watts has taken a time out and the last time it, it worked for him. It's a very key play. 748 to go third quarter 21 to 7 we're at Owen Field in Norman Oklahoma with a reminder about Sports Center that is on Monday through Saturday at 7 o'clock that is our hour edition Sunday night 11 also. And you get the top sports from around the country. And on Saturday, of course, the subject is NCAA college football. And on Sunday, the professional football league, plus all the other sports. George Grant, Sal Marciano, Tom Meese, Bob Lee, Tom Pippins. I'm going to forget somebody I know, Lou Palmer, Chris Berman. We got a bundle of good ones back there. And if I forgot somebody, I'm sorry. It is a good show. 7.48 left, third quarter. I'm going to mention one more time, Jim. Uh, Obrey, the left tackle for Oklahoma. Crouch, the left guard. Bechtel, the center. Key, the right guard. Culver, the right tackle. They're big. They average about 255 pounds. They come off the ball well, and they're the people that make it possible for those backs to operate the way they do. The average per try of the Oklahoma backs is amazing. Wilson's average 6.3 per carry. Overstreet, 7.1. Winters, 4.9. As we see the Carolina people getting together knowing they got to make something happen. You know that the Carolina and I don't know you know it Bud, but the Carolina team before today had allowed two yards per play rushing the football. That was the average two yards per play. Third down inches to go the nose of the football almost on the 10. Watts carries first down first and goal to go at the eight. Darrell Nicholson stopped him the linebacker. But it's first down at the eighth. They'll move the sticks again. And once again, Jim, they went to the unbalanced line at the top of the screen. Uh, Carolina had to shift, and that opened up the quarterback sneak a little bit better than if they'd stayed in the balanced line. The fact that Oklahoma continues to dominate may negate what could have been a turning point of the game. It was first and nine for Carolina, and they came away with no points at all. But Oklahoma's dominated the ball game so much that that's one of the happenings. I don't think it's a turning point. Ledbetter carries the football inside the five yard line as they're really running right at that North Carolina rushing defense. It was a beautiful read that time by Watts. Uh, he rode Ledbetter for about a count and a half. Uh, finally decided that he could make it. Watch him put the ball in there now and watch him move forward with the ball. And it was at the very last moment that he let him have the ball and Ledbetter powers forward. Second down and goal to go. Overstreet carries the football very close to the touchdown. Looks like Donnell Thompson is the man down at the bottom that got Overstreet. Let's look again, see if we can. We talked about the blocking. That's Obrey and Crouch making those beautiful blocks as Overstreet finds a little daylight turning it up inside. He's just short of the goal line. On their first possession, though, remember Oklahoma fumbled the ball at this point on the field and lost it to Carolina. Watts has carried the ball for 127 yards himself. Overstreet calls timeout. And I don't know what happened there. They started toward the line of scrimmage and Overstreet called timeout. I think, Jim, that they didn't know for sure what the signal was. You certainly don't want to blow this scoring opportunity. And even though it costs you timeout, and even though Oklahoma, with six minutes and 20 seconds left in the third quarter, has only one timeout remaining, this touchdown is important enough to be sure they don't get a delay of the game penalty while they're trying to figure out what was the play called in the huddle. Oklahoma can tip its hat to Gary Lowell, the sophomore from Sherman, Texas, had his fourth interception of the year moments ago at the 35-yard line to set up this drive by Oklahoma. We talked before the game, Jim, about how important first down is for a wishbone team in this half. Oklahoma on first down, three yards, second first down, five, seven, six, three, five, five. If you can keep bringing them in there, you've got medium to short yardage consistently as they do then your running attack can go 
North Carolina gets Clemson next week, then Virginia and Duke. And as they won today, the chances were that they might be in a, un, un, unbeaten for the rest of the way and unbeaten totally. But for Oklahoma, this is another ball game along the way. They get Kansas, then they get Missouri, and then they get Nebraska before Oklahoma State. This is just the beginning of the tough part of their schedule. Watts on third and inches, keeps the ball himself. And I don't believe he got it. That was the unbalanced line again to the top of the screen, and uh, neither of the linesmen signaled anything, so you know he was short. We'll take a look at it from the end zone here and see if we can tell what happened. Unbalanced line to the right of the screen. Watts tries to move to the outside. Carolina, however, did not overshift that time against it. They shot every gap, and they shot those gaps effectively. Daniels and Davis and Burgos all in on the stop, and now it is fourth down, and they've got... They got to have something to go, but it looks like the nose of the football is right on the line. Watts carries the football, touchdown. He was over the whole line before they knocked him back again. This is uh, very tough to stop. He makes the fake to Ledbetter, the fullback, keeps the ball himself. You've got to close on Ledbetter here. Watch him fake. Ledbetter drives it to the inside. Makes a block as he does so. Watts just steps in behind that block and scores quite easily. J.C. Watts. Watts, strong legs. Went behind the block beautifully. Healing comes in and adds the extra point. It is 28 to 7. Watts has 12 touchdowns on the year, three in this game today. And everything is coming up roses in the state of Oklahoma. And those back in the Tar Heel State, I am sure, are quite disappointed. But I'll remind you, nearly 21 minutes of play left. But the Sooner Schooners think they've got it. Next week, Air Force at Army, Arkansas at Baylor, at this moment undefeated. LSU at Alabama, at this moment number one as we speak to you. And Bud and I will be down there. Arizona at Washington, McNeese State at Louisiana Tech. For all our coverage for next week here on ESPN, part of the 400 hours plus of college football that we have on your source for sports. Great well, ball. the attitude, of, I'm interrupting you, but I want to say something, Coach Bud Wilkinson, the attitude of the crowd here at Oklahoma today, a little bit different than when Stanford was here and you and I were here a month ago. And Stanford got out in front and stayed there. Uh, five minutes and 51 seconds left in this quarter, and North Carolina has snapped the ball only three times. Smith. Balls on the ball to the end zone, fumbling it momentarily. Comes up to the 20-yard line. Last time in the situation when the score was only 21 to 7, Rod Elkins came out throwing the football. Let's well, see what he'll do this time. They've got to move the ball this time. They can't afford to be snuffed off here and expect to get back into the game. Elkins, a sophomore from Greensboro, North Carolina. 53% of his passes before today. John Richardson comes wide to the right. Vic Harrison goes wide to the left. Johnson the only setback as Lawrence is flanked. And Elkins comes out throwing and gets the ball off and boom, he is hit, knocked down. Amos Lawrence cannot hold on. Second down. Elkins is rolling out here to the right of the screen. Throws very quickly after about three steps. The ball is behind Lawrence. He has to turn to catch the football, and Jimerson truly unloaded on him. Second down and 10 to go. High formation this time. And the Sooner fans are having a glorious afternoon. Now Lawrence buried at the line of scrimmage. Absolutely buried. Led by Mike Riley, the strong side linebacker, number 50. Third down. Riley, 6'3", 225-pound junior linebacker. Let's watch him. There's nobody gets to him. He reads Lawrence, and as Lawrence tries to cut back, he's just all over him. So now Carolina's had the ball for five snaps in this third quarter. And facing a very difficult third down 10. Harrison to the left, and Richardson to the right. Now they split their backs. Elkins back. Waits till the last moment. And Lawrence drops the ball at the 21-yard line. Drops the football at the 21-yard line. 
That's the first time that he has dropped straight back to throw. And Lawrence just kind of slips through the line of scrimmage here. They did a lot of movement before they finally got set. This is the first drop back pass by Elkins. He gets reasonably good protection. He sees Lawrence right over the line. He unloads. Lawrence dropped the football. Streeter comes into the new kicking, and Oklahoma's going to get the ball back. Outstanding punt. Jimerson back to the 25-yard line. Jimerson looking for the wall. It does not form, and now tries to get outside and cannot get outside. He is hit down by Larry Winters, a reserve defensive back number 48. That ball is going to be put down at the 25-yard line, first down and 10. Tooley, great punch in, 54 yards, and again, marvelous coverage. Jimerson is not the uh, fastest man in the world, but he's a very tricky, nifty runner and has very sure hands. And is in there because Basil Banks, the regular punt returner, is out with a bad knee. Winters stays in and will play the left cornerback spot. Bratton is out. Oklahoma has really rolled. You don't believe me, look at the statistics. Ledbetter carries the ball across the 30-yard line. It'll be second down and four. Streeter and Schaffer made the tackle. Remember, and all of you listening in the Tar Heel State, we're not trying to downplay North Carolina, not at all. The game is not over, but we must, and I'm sure you know, they were number three in the nation against the rushing defense with only 76 yards per game, two yards per play. They were fourth in total defense, and they led the nation, allowing less than six points per ball game, and Oklahoma's got 28, and they earned them all. Well, Oklahoma's among the leaders in rushing offense, and after the day, they may be the leader. Led better. Again, carrying the football, Stanback made the stop. The market just shy of the first down at the 34-yard line. Streeter is averaging 43 and a half yards on his punts, Jim, so that's something Carolina can be very proud of. That's kicking game normally good enough to put you in great field position all of the time. Ledbetter, 93 yards. He is another back with more than the game average normally turned in by the Carolina defense. That its first team has had four touchdowns scored on it. Before today, only one. There's the first down for Oklahoma getting out to the 37-yard line. They worked lead better a lot today. The uh, Oklahoma line has adjusted their splits very well also. They move out, move in, make the Carolina men move with them. And by splitting as wide as they do, they create big gaps between the defensive linemen before they have snapped the ball. Terry Crouch, one of the outstanding offensive players, goes off and, well, Dick Crum wonders, well, he knows there are days like this in every coach's career, but he knew and knows what a big game this is for his program and for the future of this 1980 edition of the Tar Heels, who graduated a lot of people after the season. Undefeated would have been nice. Here's J.C. Watts. He's not going to pitch it out, and it's played perfectly by Lawrence Taylor. Taylor, that time, strung right along with J.C. Watts and knocked him down at the 41-yard line. And Watts may be down. He is a little slow. Well, he's not up yet, as Taylor crunched him at the 41. You can't tell, really, Jim. It uh, appears as though he just uh, had the wind knocked out of him, but uh, tell a little better later. Let's watch it and see if we can tell how he got hit. That's that little reverse pivot and the fake to the fullback which makes the linebackers move to the wrong side. It appeared that they had the play set up, but Watts couldn't quite decide whether I should pitch it or whether I should uh, keep the ball. And uh, the indecision, a big pile up, and Watts is on the ground. I can't really tell uh, Williams, the man who was just substituted for Crouch, who's over involved in the play. And Watts is uh, now going off the field. It doesn't appear that he's too badly hurt. Let's take a look at it here, and you can see as he's rolling, Williams comes over on top of him, and there's some Carolina people there, too. It's hard to tell. Darrell Shepard comes in, makes the handoff to Ledbetter. Same old play. Paul Davis stops it. It'll be third down. Watsu goes out, has 12 touchdowns on the year, three today. He came into the game as a fourth-leading scorer in the nation and added three more touchdowns himself today, three of the four. That is Daryl Shepard. He is a junior out of Odessa, Texas. At one time, he went to the University of Houston, but transferred here to Oklahoma. He's been waiting for the opportunity. Chris Keeney is in at linebacker. Schaffer is out. Shepard carries the football, cuts back very close to the first down. Stand back. 
who, you know, when I look down at the films, they'll be able to tell you better. And Dick Crum and his staff will say that Lawrence Taylor played an outstanding game or Donald Thompson played an outstanding game. But the names that we have called most often today on our own, Stanback, Schaffer, and Nicholson, they have been in on most of the plays. And now Oklahoma will kick it away, and I don't think Barry Switzer thought that uh, they spotted that ball exactly right. This is the second punt by Oklahoma this afternoon. The first one was badly rushed and uh, was good for only about 12 yards. Keeling will kick the ball away to Greg Poole, who does have the sun in his eyes as the third quarter winds down with Oklahoma. Oh, he just got it away. Flag down as they knock down the kicker. Poole takes a fair catch. But a flag is down as Keeler was absolutely floored by two on rushing Carolina men. And they'll bring it back and it belongs to OU. They came with a full 10 men that time. They're very close to blocking the kick. It was a fine snap from center, though. Keeling handled it quickly. If you do not block the punt and you do hit the kicker, it's an automatic penalty, and that's what occurred that time. First out, Oklahoma. Carolina's going to set some kind of record for fewest snaps in a single quarter. The way they're going now, they looked as though they're going to get the football. 15 yards instead marched off against them. That's the third big penalty against Carolina. They had a face mask, which uh, cost them 15 yards on Oklahoma's first drive, and then they had a uh, roughing penalty, and now a uh, running into the kicker penalty. That's 45 big yards. A 38-yard line, and Bud will be quick to tell you that is a mistake, the same as a dropped football. You just don't want to do anything like that. J.C. Watts is back. Shepard in just for that one series. Winters remains your left cornerback. Watts hands the ball to Buster Rhymes, who gets down to the 35-yard line, tripped up as he went by Donnell Thompson. It'll be second down and a short seven to go as we're 135 to go. In the third quarter. Well, Bud, when he was out here in Oklahoma, used to tell me about the big sky country. We are so far above and away from the field that we are really up in the big sky. And you're right, it's beautiful. It's a little further from the field than it used to be, too. Oh, <laughs> I tell you, there are ants down there. Second down. Seven to go. Watts hands the ball off, and Stanback makes the stop. This time they. Uh, keyed very well defensively. Oklahoma came off the ball quite well as we try to get a replay of the Carolina defense closing on the fullback. Led better. The running game has either been led better or watched most of this third quarter. The times that Overstreet or Winters or Rhymes have had it have been very few. Third down. Long yardage about seven. The fake to let better. Watts turns the ball upfield. Gets inside the 30 yard line. And very close to a first down. Winters makes the stop. Watts uh, again ran like a tailback on the play. He's very strong. Let's watch him now. There's the fake to lead better the fullback, driving to the inside, and then going in to help with the blocking. Watts is to the outside. Watts gets turned upfield, twists, turns, squirms his way forward, and they come into the fourth down and about a foot. Fourth down and inches, and they will go for it. The history has been Watts carries it himself. Let's see. This time he hands the ball off. Overstreet still on his feet. Overstreet. Touchdown. Taking an official with him. He's averaging seven yards a carry, and that's why. A hope. North Carolina for a national championship and undefeated season are apparently over with. And their highly respected defense is being run on often and very successfully. Jim, I have seen a lot of football games, but I don't think I've ever seen a running attack operate any better than Oklahoma today. 75 yard drive that time. Keeling comes on. And the ball hits the goalpost. So it is 34 to 7 with three seconds to go in the third quarter. It's the scoring play, just the straight ahead to drive, lead blocking. The line opened the hole, the backs led through. Very good block by Rhymes there. Overstreet bounces off. Looks like he's tackled, but 
He breaks the tackle, spins, turns, and then turns on the speed for the touchdown. You know, Bud, we have among all the people around the country watching us, Carolina fans who are probably devastated by this point, but they do have a good football team. And Oklahoma, which has already lost twice, and with Missouri and Nebraska coming up, I would imagine the Orange Bowl hopes are high for the Boomer Sooner fans. Oklahoma had the ball just totally dominant in this the third quarter. Carolina had six snaps with three seconds remaining, and the quarter should end on the kickoff unless he kicks it through the end zone again. Mark Smith and Victor Harrison have been back in that end zone for Carolina quite a few times today. And this time, they're going to get a shot at a return, I do believe, as Harrison takes the ball a yard deep. He's got good speed, cuts in, cuts out, gets across the 20 yard line, near the 24 yard line, and time has run out in the third quarter. 15 minutes of play to go, but play has been dominated by Oklahoma. The Sooners, 34, the Tar Heels, 7. These for keeps. Green, the big green team of National Car Rental. We play for keeps to keep you coming back. We try to answer calls in under three rings at one of the most modern reservation centers. When the GM car you want passes our maintenance checklist, you know it's dependable. That's how we play for keeps. And that's why I keep coming back 16 times this past year. The big green team, 12,000 people worldwide. We play for keeps. The Grey Cup game is the final destination as professional football from Canada swings into postseason play live on ESPN. The Eastern and Western Conference semifinals kick off Saturday and Sunday afternoons, November 8th and 9th. The following weekend, the Conference Kings will be crowned as ESPN season-long coverage of the CFL nears its exciting conclusion. November 23rd, it's all the thrilling action live from Toronto as the Super Bowl of Canadian football, the Grey Cup, comes your way exclusively on ESPN. You can feel and hear the jubilation of the Boomer Sooner fans. Their team is up by 27 points over previously undefeated team. Their team has run at will against a team that was very highly ranked in the nation against the run and in points per ball game. It's the Oklahoma team, but when we come back to start the final quarter, Carolina will be on offense for one of the rare times in this half. A fish died because it couldn't breathe, because its gills got clogged with silt, because mud ran into the river, because there was nothing to trap the rain, because all the trees were gone, because someone got careless with fire. So please, be careful with fire, because... Two of college football's top experts take a hard look at the upcoming schedule on ESPN College Football Preview with Jim Simpson and Bud Wilkinson. Stay tuned to your Total Sports Network each Friday night for an in-depth analysis of the top teams, top players, the strategy and the color that make up the college game at its best here on the network that brings you sports at their best, ESPN. NCAA football on ESPN. Michigan at Indiana, Sunday, 10 a.m. and Tuesday, 8 p.m. Eastern Time on your Total Sports Network. Jim Simpson, Bud Wilkinson, we start the fourth quarter from the 24-yard line. Carolina with the football. And a long, long way to go. Elkins forced into a passing game, but he's not going to pass here. Kelvin Bryant has a football and gets across the 25. Well, Bud Wilkinson has been talking about the fact that uh, Oklahoma's team gets off the line in a hurry. Let's watch this offensive line come off the ball. Right with the ball, they move. And look at them. Move the Tar Heels back, those Blue helmets are all moved back, and that makes the hole open up. Overstreet drives through it, and that's the one that was the touchdown play. Oklahoma had the ball three times in the third quarter. They scored three times. Second down. And seven to go. Richardson in motion. A pitch back to Kelvin Bryant. He's going to throw and does, and it's caught across the way by Richardson. First down across the 40-yard line. Well, Carolina pulls out all the bags of tricks, but before we do anything else, well, I'm going to let you do the replay. Then I got a startling statistic for you, bud. The uh, option to pass run here. Bryant has the ball. He sets up to throw. Then he's a little bit hesitant. Should I throw it? Well, maybe I will. And he did find the receiver. 
fine catch, but again, a very good defensive play to make the tackle. And it's a first down for Carolina, but not a big play. First down from the 42-yard line of the Tar Heels. Hawkins hands to his tailback. And that is Kelvin Bryant. Lost the football, and unbelievable ball to Oklahoma. Looked like Mike Riley. Yeah, when things go bad, they just continue to. Safe play when you hand it off to the tailback. He's got a lot of time to put the ball away. Bryant tries to find some daylight. He's closed down by the swarming Oklahoma defense. As he goes down, the ball pops out. You can see it coming back down now. Everybody went for it. Let's take a look at it again. The handoff is good. He has the ball. Looks like he's put it away quite well, but in the collision that occurred, the ball came popping out, and Oklahoma has a recovery. Oklahoma's already gained 407 yards on the ground. Shepard is the quarterback with the football. First down, and that adds to about 420 yards against the nation's number three team against the rush. Steve Streeter made what had to be a saving tackle. Now here are the complete statistic through three quarters. Oklahoma obviously so dominant with the running game. Not a single yard gain passing, but 407 running the football. A good balance by North Carolina, but uh, only half the yardage of Oklahoma. Shepard hands to his fullback who carries down to the 21 yard line. The time of possession, uh, 13 minutes and three seconds by Oklahoma in the third quarter. One minute, 52 seconds for North Carolina. That's true domination. Ledbetter remains in, Winters remains in, Overstreet remains in, but Shepard is the quarterback. J.C. Watts with three touchdowns today is on the bench. He was shaken up but did come back and led a drive of 75 yards. Second down and a couple of yards now for Oklahoma. Now Overstreet, submarine on a fine play by Lee Schaffer, the linebacker, number 49. Unbalanced line that time, but uh, Carolina has adjusted the defense well to the unbalanced line. It's not giving them nearly as much trouble as it did the first couple of times Oklahoma used it. J.C. Watts happy along the sideline. He is okay. When we were here for the Stanford game, and it was raining, and Stanford was winning the ball game at the end of the half, people were leaving, upset, figuring the ball game was over. Well, some people are leaving now, not too many, but they're leaving with a different view. They are leaving knowing that their team is winning big, but less than a quarter to go. Overstreet, fine play there by Greg Poole. Poole has had a good day today. He's a big back, Jim, to be playing on the corner. 199 pounds, 6'1", sophomore. You don't really very often uh, find someone that's quick enough to play corner that's that big. He's got a great career ahead of him. Shepard, as we told you, has been in there, and they are now happy that he is going to, on fourth and one, continue to run the football team. Because they want him to go for it. And why not? They've been so successful. Overstreet, I think, has got it. It all depends on where they mark it, but he's inside the 20-yard line, and I do believe that he's got a first down. But our angle is a little bit different. Carolina sends in Jack Perry again as a nose guard. And that would indicate that Dick Crum and his associates figure that it's a first down Oklahoma or else he would not be making a substitution on defense. I feel very surely then that he made it and as we see the measurement <laughs> I hope we're not wrong. <laughs> first down Oklahoma at the 19 yard line 34 to 7 11 28 to go. The first half was a beautiful football game. But, uh, the second half has been very, very one-sided. Oh, North Carolina has only made one first down in this half. Shepard pitches the ball back. Carrying the football down his winters to about the 15-yard line. A gain of four. Steve Streeter is a man under all of that, along with Lawrence Taylor. He really was hit hard that time. We take a look at number 98, Taylor. He's blocked there. Look at how fast he does the wave roll drill. Gets back up, chases, 
and is back in on the tackle. That's hey, a he is second effort that has made that man one of the great defensive players. Let's look at it ground level. Here he's coming to the outside. He gets blocked quite well. Goes to the ground, rolls, spins, comes up, chases, and has speed enough to be in on the tackle. Second down, Ledbetter. They have another first down inside the 10 yard line. Daryl Nicholson making a saving tackle. And as the shadows begin to creep across Owen Field of Norman, Oklahoma, so do the shadows creep across the hopes of an unbeaten season for North Carolina, sixth ranked in the nation. Last week, hey, we better stay away from these games. Last week we were in Austin, Texas, when Texas was second ranked. Well, I tell you, the people that uh, make the line on football, Jim, North Carolina was ranked sixth, and Oklahoma either 15th or 16th, but Oklahoma was the betting favorite going into the game. Let better, not going to go too far. And I guess that means that the people who make the odds don't do the ratings. Well, as you said, if you're undefeated, you get the vote for number one, whether you're that good or not. J.C. Watts, 139 yards. That is nearly double what the Carolina defense normally gives up to an entire team in a game. But this is the first time that they've come to Oklahoma. Carolina has been playing teams such as Furman, Maryland, Georgia Tech, which they shut out, Wake Forest, North Carolina State, and East Carolina. Second down and nine. Shepard keeps the football. Shepard is hit down at the five-yard line by Nicholson. They got a hand around his head as he went by. And I thought he had fumbled the football, uh, but he reached out as the ball tried to get away from him and pulled it back in. It'll be third down and goal to go with the nose of the football almost on the five-yard line. Carolina must turn its attention. It is not out of the bowl picture by any means. They've got Clemson, Virginia, and Duke, and if you should wind up 10 and 1, they're going to be looking at you, but this is going to be a day that's going to be hard to forget. Well, looking at the game in perspective, uh, they did play a very respectable first half. It's just the second half they got blown, blown out. First man through. Almost a touchdown. Ledbetter. Just denied about a yard shot. a quick opening straight ahead play to the fullback led better again beautiful blocking by the backs coming through he's hit very very solidly there by Jackson then he gets some support and he stopped just short of the goal line goal line defense now coming in for North Carolina as the Sooners go for it on fourth down fourth down goal to go 8 25 to go Tar Heels will be happy to get out of Boomer Sooner territory and back into the Tar Heel country Shepard carries a football touchdown. It's four possessions this half, Jim. Four touchdowns. They can't have better ball control than that. Flag is down on the play, and it may be called back. Don Key holds his head. Well, let's see what it's going to be. After the touchdown is scored or what? It is a personal foul against Oklahoma, and it is a touchdown. I'll explain the foul. We have a dead ball foul, personal foul, Oklahoma. It'll be assessed on the kickoff. And we thank you, Vance Carlson. Healing in to add the extra point, hit the goalpost moments ago at the end of the third quarter at the other end of the field. A 44 yard drive. Whoops. They just buried the Oklahoma line. And I don't know whether they're drawn off or not. Well, when you're not ready and the other guy comes, it really does happen. I'm going to ask something of our statistician, if I may. And that is, as we draw near to the end of the ball game, I'd really love to hear. That's Carolina's foul. How many yards unofficially that Oklahoma was able to pile up against a team that has such a great reputation for rushing defense and does have such great players playing on their defensive team. They get a defense organized to play against the wishbone. Uh, theoretically it's a good plan that uh, they've been playing but uh, unless you've looked at the speed of a team like Oklahoma uh, you just uh, don't have the reaction time. That's what makes it so extremely difficult. This time Keeling's kick is good. 
And it is 41 to 7. Oklahoma. And we're somewhere up at the top of that building. This is scoring play. Shepard keeping the football, running the quarterback sneak. The offensive line moved out extremely well. He was able to get the ball over the goal line, even though there was very little daylight. Let's look at it again. You can see him weave back away from the flow of the backfield. Carolina closes very tough, but he has it easily in for the score. Thus far, 451 yards for Oklahoma on the ground. Not a yard through the air. Well, you criticize Oklahoma for turnovers, but uh, unless you handle the football the way they do, you don't make 451 yards rushing. For the second time in this game, you see a kickoff from the receiving team's 40-yard line. They've got the 35-yard line. 45, rather. The official and I are both confused, but 15 yards from the 40 should take it down. And wait a minute, what's going on here? He's moving yep. it back to the 25-yard line because he had the wrong team kicking off. The Carolina team was so far downfield that the official holding the ball started to tee it up for the Carolina team and remembered, hey, it's Oklahoma kicking off from the 25. Now they got it right. I haven't seen that penalty, Jim, uh, at any point, really. It just is a uh, unusual thing to have it in two games. Well, Amazing. I tell you one thing, and I'll give you this because it is a final. And we can talk about it. Alabama has gone down to defeat, and we have just been stunned with that here. This is Mark Smith. Good freshman across the 40 yard line. They got him pinned in, and Keeling makes the stop. It's, this is what happens so often when you fumble a ball on a kickoff. The team that is covering, as Oklahoma is, they let up just a little bit. They think that we've got him easily. They lose their pattern of coverage on the field. You can see Smith bobbling the ball here, kicking it around, kicking it around. He finally picks it up. Oklahoma loses their pattern on the field. He cuts by one man, and he has got some speed as he breaks it to the outside. See Keeling coming across at that bare foot. He better keep that out of trouble, and he does as they stop him from breaking for the touchdown. Harrison and Richardson wide to the right. Ball goes straight ahead to Billy Johnson, the fullback. Well, I wonder when the polls come out whether or not it'll be UCLA at the top with Southern California having been tied, Texas having been beaten, Alabama twice the national championship beaten today, and Carolina, number six in the nation, undefeated, being beaten decisively 41 to 7. They'll have some fun with those polls. And UCLA still has to face Southern Cal, so maybe nobody will be a team with a perfect record. And Southern Cal still has to beat Notre Dame. Pass intended for Richardson. We Notre had Mississippi, Dame may be near the top. We had Mississippi State, Jim, as you remember, against the University of Miami. And they were playing that day with uh, some injured defensive linemen, but they moved the football extremely well. I imagine that those defensive linemen were back today, and uh, I know that it was a shock to not only everybody in Alabama, football fans all over the country. They thought Notre Dame was the only team that uh, played Alabama that had a shot to beat them. Well, taking nothing away from Mississippi State, maybe Alabama had an eye cocked toward Notre Dame in a couple of weeks, but I doubt it because that's two weeks away. They knew Mississippi State had good athletes, and they proved it today. Elkins back to throw. In trouble. Loops the ball high and out of bounds. The man in the vicinity was John Richardson. And it is fourth down. And it appears that the Oklahoma defense has really gained some confidence as the game has gone along. Of course, when you have that many points on the board in your favor, it does give you a tremendous amount of uh, satisfaction. And the roar that you just heard was the announcement of the Alabama score. The Alabama score, and they know that Georgia's also won today, so they'll be in the thick of things. Line drive punt as Dick Crum decides to give the ball back to Oklahoma. This crowd is still roaring over the Alabama score. Well, if Oklahoma's been beaten, why shouldn't Alabama be beaten? That's what they're all thinking. And Ohio State has been beaten. <laughs> this is fun, right? Well, the unexpected always is. 
All on the 20-yard line. Well, Bud and I will be down in Alabama next week, and I wonder what the mood will be when we move in there, because after their last game, they said we're finally becoming an Alabama football team. It's going to be a very grim mood. Feel sorry for LSU. They got to go in there. New quarterback in there is Piguess. Rod Piguess, number 14, is in there as Barry Switzer now begins to clear his bench. Rhymes remains in the backfield. Pontonet is a wide receiver. 41 to 7. They can allow Piguess, who is from Gainesville, Texas. It's called a Piguess. I know that uh, Carolina wants to stop this drive. Uh, you don't want to play a half uh, with the team scoring on you every time they get the football. Second down and four to go. Rod Pegues is in there and runs into the running back. He ran into everybody that time, but there was so much daylight that he still made a first down. Barry Joyner, the senior fullback, gets a shot and carried the ball. 6.25 to go, 41 to 7, the score. Well, with the exception of down deep in the heart of Georgia and Mississippi, they're going to be pretty unhappy. Alabama's going to be happy this week. South Carolina's going to be unhappy this week. North Carolina's going to be unhappy this week. But at Mississippi, at Mississippi State, and they've got a shot for Big Bowl, remember? Mississippi State is very happy. Ball is pitched back to Buster Rhymes. And Rhymes, who, by the way, is from the home of the Orange Bowl, Miami, Florida, is carried out of bounds by Lawrence Taylor. Close to the first down. Ask Barry Switzer uh, how good a player Rhymes is going to be as we have a penalty flag down on the field. And he said he's going to be excellent. He's got great speed. He's tall. He turns it on and he's tough. The charge is clipping against Oklahoma. They'll move the ball back. That's Herbert o Young is in there for the first time today as another running back. Oklahoma's fourth penalty. They've had two procedure calls and two clipping calls, this being the second one. Well, your backs are Buster Rhymes, Joyner, and Young. With Pegues. It's on. The quarterback. Personal foul, Oklahoma. First down. First down, the ball is on the 20 yard line. First man through is Pegues, the quarterback who held on to the football, and after a gain of about a yard, he is knocked down. Second down. Crowd has gotten quiet after all. Its team is out in front 41 to 7. The clock is winding down. Alabama has been upset today. In the Oklahoma Territory, things are just dandy. It's amazing how they have controlled the ball here in the second half after a very close first half. Uh, North Carolina's had the ball only three minutes and 59 seconds here in the second half. 3.59 for the whole second half? For the whole second half thus far. Well, I believe it. Look at that. Joyner carries the football. First down across the 35-yard line. Stop made by Winters and Streeter. And a flag is down again, apparently. Joyner uh, finds the daylight here. Good, good read. He breaks back behind that beautiful line blocking. Well, I Pops out. Finally, the two safety men close on him, but uh, again, marvelous blocking by the Oklahoma line. Well, I must have been thinking about Alabama or Mississippi State or Georgia or somebody because there was a penalty, remember, and so that is not a first down. It is across the original scrimmage marker and is now at the 36-yard line where it's third down and short and struggling out to the 40-yard line before Calvin Daniels makes the stop. And a unit that we haven't seen very much of, the Oklahoma punting team comes on the field. Here's Jordan. Today, there have been some very big plays by Overstreet. Winters has handled the ball a few times. Rhymes has handled the ball a few times. But it has been primarily Bud, and correct me if I'm wrong, the quarterback or the fullback that has done most of the effective work. On the uh, wide play, the option, whether you're going to keep or pitch by the quarterback, uh, Carolina has always covered the pitch man very, very well. That's opened it up for the quarterback to keep the ball. Greg Poole watches the ball bounce. Whoops, it hit off a North Carolina man and belongs to Oklahoma. Well, when that ball's on the ground, uh, 
you got to get away from it. <laughs> you don't stay close to it. It looked like Delosier is a man that recovered after Johnson was down there. We'll take a look and see which one. The ball is uh, kind of a line drive punt. It hits the ground. It hits the Carolina man. The Oklahoma wide receiver comes down the field. And that's uh, number five for Oklahoma. Dolzier, Dolzier who makes the recovery on the play. And when things go bad, they truly do to go bad. Well, a week ago, Bud and I were down in Texas. And Texas was undefeated. They lost to SMU and they lost. A lot of pride down there, and Carolina's having the same kind of problem here. Oh, my, Buster Rhymes has run out of bounds. That's a fine play by Stanback across the way. No inside fake on that play. That was just a straight sweep, and that's the kind of thing that Carolina's been used to looking at, and they played it well. Three minutes and 52 seconds to go, and every time Oklahoma carries a football, that's a notable exception where they lose there. They pile up more and more yardage, and they already have enough points on the board. That's the first time that they've uh, really had a bad play. They lost four yards on the play, and it's the first bad play of the game for them. Jay McKim is wide to the right. Switzer clearing the bench. And here's Pegues inside the 15-yard line. Down to the 14-yard line, tripped up by Lawrence Taylor, showing his speed from the opposite side of the line of scrimmage. He's got some speed. Everybody on the Oklahoma backfield has got some speed. Pegues. The third halfback to have played. Reading his blocks, turning up field, accelerating as all the Oklahoma backs too, being tripped up, almost broken. Jim Rockford goes wide to the left. And no, that's not a television show. That's a split end for Oklahoma. Third down and about a yard to go. And struggling for the yard, and I don't think he got it. That is Joyner, the fullback, of course, and that Chris Ward and Willie Harris as now Dick Crum begins to rest some or at least replace, if not rest, replace some of his defensive secondary linebackers. And we have a fourth down coming up. They missed it by about a foot, Jim. Lock continues to run. We're down to, well, you can watch it with me. We're right now down to three minutes left of the ball game. A ball game that at halftime was 14 to 7, and right now is 41 to 7. <laughs> 23 is young, trying to get outside, trying to get that first down, still on his feet, and they do a good job, and it'll depend on where they spot it. That's about the only time you don't want to try to bounce it to the outside. Uh, he could. He might have made it had he stayed inside and just tried to power for it. He was thinking too much in terms of a long run rather than thinking in terms of get the first down. 239 and now we'll take a check if we can on the total yardage of Oklahoma today because that is the big story. Not only that they made so much yardage but that Carolina gave up so much yardage. As this may be the last time although there's a lot of time left but Oklahoma will get a chance really to run the football. Barry Switzer has done an outstanding job today. His game plan has worked almost to perfection. Stuttered a little bit in the first half but really got rolling in the second half. And now Scott Stankavage is the quarterback for Carolina as they don't want Elkins to get hurt as Amos Lawrence carries the football not very far. He's he had an outstanding first quarter and has been shut down since. And the first uh, second play of the game he almost popped it for a touchdown and he's exciting. He really hope he doesn't make a long run. Look at that pivot as he breaks it to the outside. His weight is forward. He's got great foot action. You don't get a solid pop at him because he's so elusive. Getting down near the two minute mark. Right ahead is Lawrence across the 20 yard line. And not near the first down. It'll be third at about three to go as we're below the two minute mark. Well, but I can't get over the activity of the day. And we got to look at the positive side. For Mississippi State, it's been an outstanding day. For Oklahoma, it's been an outstanding day. But for two of the nation's undefeated the top ranked teams, it has been a shattering day in that Alabama has lost to Jackson, Mississippi, and North Carolina is losing here. Sturdivant is now in at quarterback for the Tar Heels, but that was Lawrence who carried the football, and he's got a first down across the 25. That'll stop the clock while they move the sticks. So dominant has Oklahoma been. They have had the ball 10 minutes and 14 seconds in the fourth quarter after having it 13 minutes and 15 seconds in the second, in the third quarter. That's 25 minutes, a little more than 25. 
That's a happy, happy crowd that is going there. And I'll say this for the Carolina fans. Only a few of them have left. They're still huddled over there, perhaps in disbelief, certainly in sorrow. But they're hanging in there. This is Sturdivant, the fullback, carrying the football. Gets across the 30-yard line as we're in a position of just winding down the clock. Sanders, a linebacker, made the stop. And Carolina would like to put another touchdown on the board just to savage a little bit of their pride. This is a good football team, Jim. They just uh, didn't adjust well to perhaps the quickest, fastest running attack in college football. Barry Switzer said yesterday, we hope to take it to them. Well, Barry, you took it to them. Start of it. We're getting close to the last play of the game. It'll be third down and short with 37 seconds left in the clock rolling all the time. And I don't think a Carolina will be in too big a hurry to get the ball in play. Wayne Tucker comes on, whispering to Stan Cavage, his quarterback, with the 25 seconds to go. Why not put it up? Why not try to get something? Got nothing to lose when it's 41 to 7 and 17 seconds to go. Let's see what happens. Oh, nope, they're going to run the football. And that is famous Amos Lawrence. And unless somebody calls timeout, we'll just say that Oklahoma, under the catalytic play of J.C. Watts, the coaching of Barry Switzer, the running of Ledbetter and Wilson, the fullbacks, and the play of the offensive line getting off the football. And now this would be the final blow if Carolina's Amos Lawrence is truly down and seriously hurt. I don't think so, Jim. I certainly hope not, although he is holding his shoulder. But we coaches always talk about you've got to have a balance to your offense. You've got to be able to run the ball to set up the passes. And the passes, you've got to throw them to set up the run. Oklahoma does not complete a pass today. And they put 41 points on the board against one of the great defensive rushing teams in college football. And Dick. I know that Dick Crum is a oh. little bit disappointed. And hoping that Lawrence, who's coming off the field, is just shaken up, and that is all. Because there still remains a season for Carolina. It is not over for them. You'll be able to see them in the holiday season. They're counting it down. It is all over. J.C. Watts, three touchdowns. The Oklahoma offense that went for nearly 500 yards. We'll have to wait for the official statistics, but well over 450. Whereas North Carolina had only allowed 76 per ball game and two yards per carry. But it was a different, different story, Bud Wilkinson. It was a very different game, uh, Jim, a different team that they're looking at. Uh, Oklahoma scored the second time they had the football. They scored again the next time they had the football. They were leading 14 to 7 at the half, but in the second half, it was just total Oklahoma. They scored the first four times they had the football. Mm -hmm. 